RTDO Team Deathmatch Edition, Spec Ops Game Club, and 3E Fortune Telling. This is Achievement Hunting 101. Good morning, good evening, good day. Welcome to Achievement Hunting 101. I'm Fufu Cuddly Poof, and thank you for listening. This is level 45. All right, so we got a great show for you today, but let me introduce to you my co-hosts. We have the usual party of L, Corey, and Nate. What's up, guys? Hi. Hello. Howdy doody. It's howdy doody time. All right. Uh, that with happened. That, L, how was your week? It's howdy doody time. Pretty good. How was your week, Kenneth? It was pretty good. Can't complain. Much? Oh, yeah, well, I can. I'm sure you can. Because I had the luxury of playing a little ditty called Planet Rick's 13. You mean like Rick and Morty? Absolutely. It's Rick's R-I-X. And it's a sometimes you game. And it's a game where you walk around and... I don't even know what you do. <laughs> you follow a guy until it's done. Exactly. You want to know how long it took me to beat this game? 27 minutes. It took a long time because three of the achievements I popped popped in the future. Did that happen to any of you guys? Uh, I, yes. Just just once or twice, though. So. No, I, I didn't get any of that, that funny future pop. Yeah, it's the strangest thing. It was showing up at the top of TA, and I'm like, where's the ones that just popped? And I'm like, wait a minute, that's tomorrow's date. It's crazy talk. Yeah, so actually Speaking Michelle was over, and Michelle was over, and she read the whole guide to me. Oh, Michelle beat the game. No, she read it, and I touched the controller once or twice. And it was done in 33 minutes, so that is a real quick one. Did you enjoy it, as far it as would, playing with a guide goes? It was goes? not good, and I don't think anyone would be able to figure out any of it without a guide. Except yeah, for the it was, ones, it was kind of confusing. Well, even that one, you had to, some <laughs> of them were like really out there, if I remember correctly. I have not had the um, fortune to play this yet, but I do remember when you streamed it, Corey, and I'm pretty sure I fell asleep on it. <laughs> oh, yeah, you should stream this game without a guide. Um, No. No, that, uh, I don't want to. There is more things that can make me rage and would probably be more, be more entertaining. You want more raging? Do you want more raging? Sure. All right, well, we had a Sometimes You game. Only makes sense that we have a Rattle Like a game, too. I played back in 1995. It was like <laughs> 10 years before Kenny was born. It was a different time back then. He's shaking his head no. 12? Uh, I continue. <laughs> I'm just ignoring you. So without saying too much, the game was intentionally designed to play like it came out in 1995. And it's kind of like Resident Evil 1 or Alone in the Dark PC version. There was where... games that far back? That's like the I, Stone I Ages. I yeah. So they intentionally have the tank controls and you can't run. So it's just... Ugh walk so slow and yeah and what type of game is it i guess you can say survival horror that's what it is on ta but but there's nothing scary at all and the enemies move like molasses so you don't even have to kill half of them you can just walk by them that's how bad the ai is with a no, guy see what this looks like i used uh bill's bizuminati's guide so of course his guide was about an hour so it took me two hours so that's how these things go. Oh, God, that looks horrible. <laughs> but there is a story. You find notes, and they tell you the story, and, and this guy lost his memory, so he only <laughs> remembers things as far as 1995. <laughs> it's actually pretty funny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he can't remember anything after that. Uh, I don't want to give away too much, but it's very interesting. The guy who made the game um, was really passionate about it. He just wanted to make a game that made you think about the good old days, and I guess this is a little bit of a spoiler, but that's okay. After you beat the game, there's kind of like a little uh, director's commentary 
and he talks about why he made the game and what he wants you to to feel when playing the game. So, why did you make a game like it was that far back? Cocaine. Drugs are always the answer. Drugs are bad, okay. Yeah, sometimes I play games that you can clearly see the developer put a lot of time into it. It's really a passion project, and then you just kind of dog on it because of the day and the time that it came out, and it makes you feel a little, a little bad, doesn't it? Makes me feel bad. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, well, what makes you feel good, Corey? Uh, new RTDL lists. How's an Ooh. RTDL way? <laughs> yes, it was. We got our new list this week. Woo! Yippee! And with the help of Real Gamer Score Podcast, the host of the RTDL competition, and ZZ Urban Spaceman, we Thanks, now Banks, have implemented. Well, they implemented uh, based off some ideas uh, a team a team challenge in RTDL. So we had a nice little draft this past week, captains and people picking people and. That was fun. You were there, El. I was? Yeah. You're one of the steamed captains. I was an esteemed captain. You got stuck on your team. This might explain your draws. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> People call draws something different down here. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> your picks. <laughs> um, um, my team is Michelle Wakapel, Ben L72. Fresh three three six 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 nine, Toad Style Venom, Death Dealers, Spanky and Sprunkle, and Kronos. And your team name? Have you have you decided on that yet? Three days in? Um, I don't know what <laughs> somebody came up with. That's not punny. I think it's bad luck to change it now. I don't know. Someone. What was this meme team? Yeah, I like them both. Yeah. It's fine. We're uh, currently um, in last place, so um, nowhere to go but up. So, yeah, so we have four teams. L is the captain of, of one team that you just heard, and we're tracking unlocks and points. Uh, I don't know if, if we have a determined winner yet. I think we're just, it's, it's fun. It's, you know, nothing too serious, but, yet. uh, real quick, Skeptical Mario is the captain of Mario Party, and he is joined by Prue, Jimbot, Wildwood Mike, Chin Doctor, Shababble, Emperor L. Koosh Moose and Fufu Cuddly Poof. So yeah, he's got a Mario lot of, Party. He's got a yeah. lot of podcast uh, talent there. It's got Off. half our panel. That's right. You guys are going and down. Crew. And, and crew. And crew. <laughs> uh, we also have Team Jesterado, RTD Eld. And that is led by XLAX Jester. Jesta. Jesta. And he recruited NBA Kirkland, Shadowless Edge, Reset 42. Freem Hole, Hatton 90, J Black, High Road V2, and Iron Fist of Snuff. And rounding out the last team is Elroy OMJ, team captain to guy. the Awesome Possums. And he drafted yours truly, Homer, What the Fug, Kingsman, Enigma Gamer, <laughs> Professor Pluto, <laughs> The Tominator, and Matism. So. We have gotten the team part down, uh, and so far, as of recording, we're three days into the month. Uh, four. High Road has four. 23. Out of, uh, yeah, four. Four days into the month. High Road has 23 of his 25 achievements. <laughs> like, uh, what the heck? <laughs> the, top, the top 10 uh, is somebody from every team, or from a team, um, and they ra- range from 23 to nine unlocks so people are putting in the time and the effort early this month and uh it's, it's pretty exciting you can go to the rtdl uh, uh channel or the 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 sheet that they manage and you can see the colors and you can see the teams uh separated out and see who has what and, and compare and contrast but I, it's, it's gonna be a fun month and i look forward to more team friendly versions of rtdl Hey, uh, do you notice somebody who stands out in the top 35, 34? <laughs> he, yeah, I do. He, he just <laughs> he just squeaked out uh, of the top 10. That's Marky B. Hoy. Yeah. The only person in the top 33 that is not on a team. So, uh, and the, the way, just 
for future reference. I don't know uh, if it'll happen this same way exactly, but uh, just stay tuned. We'll announce it, obviously. But uh, we took interest in Discord, and then um, the captains had a live draft in Discord, and they all got on a call, and they picked their people, and there was a little bit of trash talk and a little bit of encouragement, and it was, it was a good time. But well, so Now, how did the team size get determined? I thought there was a limitation. Uh, yeah, so on the spreadsheet, there is now uh, a team leaderboard next to the monthly leaderboard, and it compares – the unlocks and the score of all four teams and it, it orders them. And then each team has its own page at the very end to separate the individual players on each team. And I think the team size of 10 max was kind of like a design, uh, decision for the spreadsheet. So, uh, we went with it. I'm fine with it. I really don't think there should be more than 10 anyways per team. Um, it's a little crazy. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it means crazy enough that we got 40 people interested. So, uh, I'm excited for it. Currently, I guess since I have it up, uh, Jess Dorado is winning all around. So, but that's not to, uh, to take any encouragement. We know RTDL is a, is a marathon and not a sprint. So, yeah, even the team it's that's not funny has <laughs> a chance. I was joking that once High Road's done, he's not going to know what to do with himself for 25 <laughs> days. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he's he's been putting in the time and the effort there for sure. I did hear a funny story, though, that he pulled an achievement for a game that he had to go and buy uh, in order to finish <laughs> his list. So that was a little fun. But did anybody else have any RTDL stuff for that little segue? I'm well, like Lush Talk. I was just going to say that uh, for RTDL, it's actually gotten me to play. I, I haven't, uh, I haven't done the RTDL, uh, RTDL in quite some time, and I'm currently up to five. So that is definitely a highlight for me in the past six months for sure. <laughs> I think one of the best things about RTDL is the fact that, like you said, Nate, it gets you to play. But not only that, it gets you to play those games that you go, oh, I forgot about that, or the games like. Oh, I always wanted to play that. I dived it and that's it. Then I kind of want to go back to it. I mean, I have a couple of games like that on uh, my list. Like the very first achievement I went for was prototype for the Xbox one. I had a story related achievement and it was, it wasn't too far out. I had, I think I had to play like three, four hours to unlock that achievement. And then come to find out on that, on the road to getting that one, I wound up unlocking like three or four more. And then this also turned into the kind of thing. It's just like, Oh, I'm close to this one. Let me go for that. Oh, now I'm really close to that one. Let's go for that. And on my way to getting this one, I wound up unlocking like eight in prototypes. I've made some decent progress in that game. And that's been a game that I've been wanting to go back to and go back to and complete again. At least complete the story. Anyway, did you get the achievement you were going for? I did. What was the ratio on it? It was a 3.54 ratio. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, that was my second highest. Very nice. That completely goes away from the point that I was going to make. <laughs> that well, AAA games generally produce smaller ratios. Ah, yes, you read my mind, Monsieur well, Corey. This, well, have you guys actually played Prototype? Oh, yeah. Okay, Ooh. so you know about the web of intrigue where you have to consume certain guys to get uh, the memories? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So my achievement, uh, Hope, you have to get to a certain point in the story, and then you have to go find these three specific guys in a sp- specific spot on the map. So this is actually something that is very missable, and you might not go and get unless you are actually looking to get it, so that helps. And that's the... Th- problem with a lot of the prototype achievements it's stuff you have to go out of your way to get that's almost a collectathon, and it's just annoying to get i mean like two other games that i dived and really want to, i've been wanting to play thief and titanfall 2 i dive the games never played them they've been sitting on my hard drive and i just never picked them up now with this rtdl especially since it's a team thing and i don't want to let everyone down it's like all right let's boot them games up let's go for them 
do you guys want to hear the negative part about RTDL? Sure. So I have a game that has a unobtainable in it uh, from the beginning, so it's not completable 100%, and thus the ratios on some of the in-game achievements are very high. And this particular game is Toy Soldiers War Chest, and one of the two achievements I have left, uh, both are like in the eights for ratio. Whoa. One of the achievements is for completing 100 multiplayer matches. It's not incredibly hard, it's just grindy. And one day I... I grinded out like 90 something percent of it because I was waiting for RD Dale to pick it up. Well, guess what? That glorious month came. And what do you know? That game is so bugged that it is no longer playable. And <laughs> I have two almost nine ratio achievements that uh, I will probably never get now that I was very now, you close say, to. Oh, you say sucks. it's unplayable, but is that just unplayable on the S and the X, but the OG can play it? I, I will say that the OG is the only one I don't have access to that I can't test it on. Hmm. Um, I could help you with that. Yeah. Well, you would need access to the game you if you don't have it. Um, over. Well, I mean, I have the game maybe if I start a, a lobby and you join me and then I lose. That might work. So, I don't know. So, so, so the problem with the game is that it will load the main menu, and that then you're stuck there. You can't, you can't move anything. What? Um, yeah, it's that bad. And Jeez. I found a forum post today that was uh, two days old, and somebody said that looks like it's broke again. Nobody has unlocked these achievements since January of this year. Um, at which at one point it was confirmed that it was broken, but it was confirmed that it got fixed. So I'm, I can only assume that it got broke again. Um, so kind of stung myself there, uh, looking that, that will be the one that I, I re-roll. Um, but yeah, say those preloads can, they can get you. That that's a, sucks. <laughs> that's a bummer. Uh, like <sighs> I've played two games. I think that have issues with the newer consoles. They're deformers, which is gone. And also, um, a walk in the dark which was a one man developer team. Mm. Uh, and that for, for a while wasn't working on the X. Um, but then I fired it up just the other day cause I saw there was an update and they actually fixed it. So <laughs> nice. There might be hope, but, uh, hoping that it'll be done this month. <laughs> yeah. No, no hope there. Yeah. Um, I'm actually like, I went over to my dad's and he has the S and that's where I downloaded the game again and tried it. And it happened. It did the same thing. Even if it would have worked, I was only 50-50 on my progress keeping over because I noticed when I downloaded the game and started it up, it, it never synced to the, the cloud. Oh, jeez. Um, and so I don't have that save anymore that I know of. And if that is not saved, that 90-something 90, that, you know, 90 wins I have isn't saved on a server somewhere, uh, that would be gone and I'd have to regrind it all out on the local save. But it's just a big mess with that game apparently. That's what you get, you dirty preloader. <laughs> I, I know, I know. <laughs> and I actually just checked. I don't think I have that one. I have Cold War. Yeah, yeah. This is the only entry for that series on the Xbox One. Well, that sucks. But you know what doesn't suck? And no, we don't have it. That doesn't suck segment. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I have two more awesome things that happened this week. I completed a Vayner. Just a real quick side note: the TMNT Ooh. 360 Vayner. Nice. So and I'm it's the turtles. Yep, oh, I'm, I'm still one for one every month this year. And oh boy. the uh, the last piece is we started a new short boost uh, last night, and that is the Crackdown Three Wrecking Zone boost. We had it's a ten person boost. If you didn't know, five person uh, squads and it's so dead right now that you can search and find each other with no problems that is so um, sad it, it is it is a little it's sad good for good for you us. for wanting to boost and get the achievements that's sad for a game that just came out like two months ago or a whatever quote unquote, it was triple a first party game well we were yeah. finding randoms so i mean it's not so dead and there's <laughs> They're they're just annoying enough that they can kind of break up the boost, but yeah, they if you don't have uh, two full squads of five people, then yeah, you, you might run into that. But if you, if you do, then you shouldn't have any problems. We we did have a full squad of ten. 
Uh, two had to drop out early, but we did get two replacements, and uh, they finished out the session with us. We all, I think we all got seven achievements out of the 12 in the game. So achievement-wise, we were oh, over halfway bad. done with it, and that was just a few hours. Um, I mean, the game only has two modes, territories, which is like control or hard point, and then it has an agent hunter mode, which I'm not sure what it is. I can only guess that it's like Team Deathmatch or right. something like Slayer. that. Slayer. That's what it seems like, yeah. And so you have to get like 100 kills. You have to get MVP, which is the highest score on the winning team for each game mode. Um, for, we did territories last night, and everybody got the MVP. Everybody got uh, killed the other team with every weapon, which is a dumb achievement because the only way you can get every weapon is if you die. So you, get, you, you have, have to, do, to do it in one match. That's in one match. The, that would be really tough to do naturally. Yeah. That's There's dumb. an achievement for getting a lot of destruction in one match, which I think everyone got. That was there for the the whole time. Um, I think there was just a general win your first match achievement and a couple others. But uh, we think that we have another session of Agent Hunter and we'll pro probably be done with the game. If not, we'll be really close. So uh, it was a good short boost. I think we got two RTDL achievements knocked out for people. One was for me. So thank you, everybody who helped. <laughs> And I'm I think the other one was for L. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Appropriately enough, uh, it was called SmackDown. <laughs> so that's for a melee kill. Oh yeah, melee kill. That that was another one. Um, but yeah, that was that was a fun part of the week this easy, past week. Easy peasy. Yeah, even though uh, what were you saying, Kenny? A <laughs> aging hunters like Fug. <laughs> that Fug what was there. Fug, Fug was, was on the, on the, the roster. Yeah, he only messed things up once. After I complimented him on uh, behaving, <laughs> that that was very uh, <laughs> ironic that that immediately happened. We love you, Fuggy. So he took the place of Saucy Slingo. Oh, thank There's God! No wild card. There was no wild card. Somebody did play the uh, Saucy. Uh... Meow, meow. Wah, 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 wah. Yeah, so good times. Good times. Big thanks to everyone who joined us. <laughs> um. Back to the uh, gaming story of the week. Did you have anything else, Kenny or Nate? I think L said his piece. Kenny, anything? Well, I got two things to talk about. First, real quick, I don't want to harp on this since we did talk about it on a previous show. But if you follow us on Mixer, you saw that I was streaming Power Rangers Battle for the Grid. And I just want to kind of give a quick update to, to it. They added a story mode to it. And three new characters. I when uh, during the stream, I first started off. I did a, an arcade mode, which is where the one a lot of the achievements are. You know, beat arcade mode with each character. And I started up, got one of the achievements. I actually had one of the best games I had. Typically, I struggle a bit. I went right on through it. So I guess power to the mixer players. They helped me out there. And then I did a bunch of the story mode. If you follow the comics, the story mode is basically just the shattered grid. And with it, they added three, like I said, they added three new rangers. Udana, which is the mystic ranger. Uh, Cenozonic Blue, which is like the first ranger. And then Dragon Armor Trini, which I think is a comic thing. I don't really know. It is. Okay. I had some fun with that. That was, that was cool. Good time. But the other game I want to talk about, and this is the, this is where achievement hunting is actually really cool and it's fun is I unlock the see the light achievement. In Final Fantasy VII. Oh, so, gosh. <laughs> Every week. Oh, yeah. This Final Fantasy VII achievement. There's okay, a so reason they call Final, it Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy VII is my guacamole. You guys won't shut up about that godforsaken game, so I'm going to keep talking about this one. Yeah, tell them, Kenny. So the reason why this achievement in particular is really cool is it is for getting Eris's Great Gospel limit break this is some i like i've said before you know i've probably played this game seven to ten times or whatever i've beaten it so many times but this is something that i've never done i know i knew i've always known that eris dies so therefore why would i play with oh, her no. she is useless Spoiler. It, it's like 20 years old i don't care <laughs> There's no point in leveling her and getting all, doing all this work when she's just going to die and I can't use her for the final confrontation. So what was the point of doing all that? Well, going for this achievement, not only 
let me see something new, but it's just like, I, I just got that new experience with the game. It's just like, oh, look, something I've never really done that I now had to go do. And I was going through, and, you know, I've always seen her first two limit breaks. I knew that she had the healing win and then seal evil. But the next five, I didn't. I basically didn't even know existed. So while I'm going through and using limit breaks and killing enemies to unlock them all, it's just like, oh look, that's what that does, and oh that's what that's what that looks like. So it was just a really cool experience to be able to have, and I really only would have seen this because of achievement hunting. Hunting. If it wasn't for this achievement, I just never would have seen that part of the game. That's an excellent point, Kenny. And it's What's like my- that. I have a question for you, Ken. Okay. Have you succumbed yet to using any cheats? I have. Okay, the, which ones? This the, For this particular achievement, I was using the three times and the um, instant limit break, the god mode one, because there is no way I'm sitting there for 15 hours grinding <laughs> these, this achievement out. No. Did you find a good spot to grind it out? Yes, the... In my opinion, one of the best best spots to grind it out is to go back to Midgar and to give her like a fire with the all materia or a bolt or something to where you can just click it and kill the enemies instantly. And they pop up in groups of two or three uh, consistently. And I think I only spent like a half hour or so grinding this out. It, was, it really wasn't that much. Yeah, that was my question is how long oh, with the so god bad. mode and everything. Yeah, it it didn't take that long at all. And uh, the um, bromance one popped as you expected. Yes, yeah, and that was the other team I popped the other day. I <laughs> I went on a date with Barrett, which Woo-hoo. was great. Good job. The, the <laughs> yeah, that's the big missable achievement, and it's funny. I remember doing this a long time ago. Somehow I got it by accident, just not going for it or whatever. But there was a lot of things that happened there that as a kid it went right over my head like him basically suggesting that cloud is a pedophile Mm -hmm. didn't really get that back then going through this now i'm cracking up laughing over different little (laughs) things definitely not a game for kids no (laughs) no it is how about you nate how was your week well uh i played a lot of guacamole Yep, that, that's to be expected. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like to start off with the first half hour of Guacamole, and I'll just play it right now. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, it's been kind of all over the board, man. There's just a lot of stuff going on with the um, the RTDL, and, and like you said, um, one of the reasons I'm participating is I don't like to let people down. Uh, so this team format is actually getting me to go in there and do that. Yes. Uh, and my, my big drawback for the RTDL is that I start playing these games that have been on my backlog and I'm like, man, I really would like to finish this, but I've got to go get this 1.3 ratio or this 1.04 ratio, or I really need to grind and get this, you know, this four something ratio. Um, so it just reminds, it takes me back into all these games that I just want to go back and play some more like, uh, uh, watchdogs. That game is fun. Man, I want to get into that. That's a game I, was, I need that needs to pop up on the list. So I, can I play don't it. know why I got yeah. so much hate. I, I enjoyed watchdogs. Yeah, I, I'm really enjoying that, and you know, even the crappy Madagascar two that I started playing, man, the fonts in that are just so bad. But um, <laughs> but I just want to go through and I just want to knock it out. I'm actually having kind of fun with it. I never watched those movies, um, really, but dude, they're yeah. so good. Well, at well, least watch the first. Old. You have a daughter. You have a young daughter. <laughs> well, yeah, but you got to remember, I didn't have a daughter back when these came out, and you know, these were not in my age range at the time. Oh wait, Kenny doesn't uh, have a daughter either. <laughs> Yes, no, I'm a child. I, I, I will openly admit that I'm a child. <laughs> uh, so aside from <clears throat> trying to juggle RTDL, I've also been uh, going into some other things. Like I'm trying to complete uh, Microsoft Jackpot before the middle of the month when it goes away. And I'm trying to get to squeeze as much uh, gamer score out of Happy Dungeons as I can before it goes away in the middle of the month. Um, so that's a... It's kind of a full plate there. Uh, In addition to that, I am trying to keep up to date on my Minion Masters. Uh, This is a new kind of a daily grind game that I've picked up. Uh, We talked about it last week briefly. I just wanted to go over a couple of the achievements that you kind of want to keep up with if you are playing this. Um, The game is not skill locked. 
or not really skill locked. Like one of the achievements you have to do is get to the silver tier. It's really not that hard. And if you're actually having trouble, excuse me, trouble with this game, I would recommend playing teams. And yeah, you'll get a rando, but you don't talk to them. So <laughs> hopefully you'll get a good rando and they'll carry you up through to the silver tier. And it's really not that hard. Um, but one of the things you're going to want to do to make the grind go faster or make the grind um, just happen and, and not something where you forget about it and have to come back to it is every day you want to log on. You want to get your daily resource coin, and then you want to apply that and get that back. You need to do that a hundred times. So you're guaranteed to log into this game a hundred times. Um, you're also going to want to be checking for daily challenges. And when you see them, try to knock them out all in one day. So let them accumulate, get all three or whatever. You're not getting three per day. It seems like I'm getting one per day. Um, so maybe I'm doing something wrong. I don't know. But um, that's my strategy is to let them kind of build up. And I try to knock all three down uh, in a half hour play or something like that. Um, there's an achievement for playing with eight of the masters or all eight of the masters. They rotate in free masters. So you don't have to buy them or anything. You just kind of wait for the next week to show up and you get access to a couple different ones. So you'll be chipping away at this one. When you have a new master, win a match with that master. And then uh, you do that eight times total and you got that one done. And finally, one of the ones you're going to be wanting to save up currency for um, there are a series of, uh, let's see, four achievements. And these are for crafting cards. And the resource for that is a shard. Uh, you're going to need to collect, um, let's see, 200 and, yeah, 2,675 shards, basically, because you need to craft a legendary card, which costs 2,000 shards, a supreme card, which is 500, a rare card is 125, and a common is 50. I'm currently close to 1,000, and I have not been playing too much. So this isn't super grindy, yeah, but you may not. Yeah, you may how, not want to... How much U.S. American dollars does this achievement cost? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know how much it would cost you if you were buying it from scratch, but uh, I'm playing completely for free. Um, for and free? That's yeah, how it starts out. Free. Nah, I'm not... not I'm not good. <laughs> if I haven't paid for Idle Champions, there's no way I'm paying for this. Uh, this game's actually fun. Yeah, so, who would pay for Idle Champions? <laughs> oh, no. No comments. But, uh, yeah, that, I mean, I'm just, I'm spinning a lot of plates, and I wish I had a little more time. Which brings me to the next thing. Um, there's a game that we got a code for that hopefully we'll be reviewing soon. It's called Time Spinner. Woo! And I'm really looking forward to that and hopefully talking about that some next week. But that's it for me. That's That's been my crazy packed week. Corey, put the controller down. I mean, I'm totally not playing Time Spinner right now. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> All right. So this coming week is the biggest thing in gaming. It is E3. Now, is that e L times three? Mm, sure. Let's go with that. Well, right. It's say biggest thing in gaming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now for the the Microsoft specific conference is this coming Sunday, June 9th. Uh, it's at 4 p.m. Eastern and a bunch of other dates, but or a bunch of other times, but who cares about those because they're not my time zone. You can figure it out yourself. Are you guys looking forward to anything? Hoping anything will be popping up? Yes. Like what? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, there's a couple of things that we are seemingly confirmed, um, but not 100%. The, I think they used Plumber's Putty this year, so the leaks have been few and far between. Uh, Kush hates when we talk about leaky pipes. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the, the biggest thing I'm excited for is I hope Fable 4 is real. Yeah. I, I think it is. And I don't think, uh, it will be missing from the lineup. So Fable 4 is the one I really, uh, look forward to the most that I know of. Um, I always get excited about new IPs and whatnot as well, but Fable 4 for an existing franchise personally. I think that is going to show up. I feel like because we know the next generation of consoles coming, and if they were to say buy our next generation console, we have two new games for it: Fable Four and Halo Infinite, and maybe one other game, something newer, whatever, maybe something, maybe a new IP or something. That's a pretty decent lineup to launch a console with. I mean, I'm like, fine with that as long as the console comes out. Within a year to a year and a half, which would push it holiday 2020. It, they, I do not want to hear anything that's not coming out in 2020 or 
uh, sooner. I agree. I think there's a, We're think Microsoft, there's a chance not PlayStation. That. I want to know yeah. what's coming out in, in the near future. Yeah, I think there's a chance of that because that's kind of been the trend recently is people aren't announcing games as far out. Um, they're, they're doing them on like a six month window, which is really good. I really appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, I don't much care what's coming out in five years. The game could completely change by then. I E crackdown. Uh, and I get setbacks happen. Um, the one that oh, comes yeah. to, I mean, crackdown obviously, but, uh, Ninten- if you follow Nintendo, they completely scrapped their Metroid progress and they're starting from scratch. They let people know, and there really hasn't been much since then. And I can appreciate that for what it is, but don't tease us for, you know, five E3s in a row. Or if nothing else, do like how, but if you do want to get your game out there and you want to let people know and get a little bit of hype, do like how Bethesda did with the Elder Scrolls Six. something I'm dying for. I'm I'm dying for some news on Elder Scrolls Six. You know, all they did was just say, hey, we're working on it. They did a 15 second trailer that just said Elder Scrolls Six. They didn't tell us anything about it. And it just kind of got all the people like me going, Ooh, I can't wait. I can't wait. And that's about it. Haven't heard let's nothing the, about it. Let's run the line. Three things you're, you're looking forward to from E3. Kenny. Ooh, gun I'll, to your head. Gun to your head. Three. Only three. Oh, that's, uh, that's hard. Uh, Elder Scrolls Six, Fable Four. And uh, what would be what would be the best one? And honestly, newly acquired game studios. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, if you've been listening to this at any amount of time, you know I am one that likes to fight in the console wars. I like the PlayStation v Xbox, and then Nintendo's over there doing Nintendo things. Who cares about them? They're playing with cardboard. But I'm hoping they get some more game studios. The past two years, or maybe even three years, they've just been doing nothing but acquiring studios, building the first party things. Want some payoff now? We haven't had the best lineup when it comes to exclusives. I want something big. Give me something. Corey, give me three. Fable 4, previously mentioned. I want to hear more about xCloud. I want that beta to come out. Very oh, I forgot soon. about that. Yeah. And yeah, I one. really I want another console reveal like they revealed the Scorpio. I want at least that much information f- from it. I not feel just, like not they have to game. release that. So you want some sort of detail, but not not the whole show. Yeah, that 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 would be fine for me. L? So it's only um, Microsoft doing it this year, right? <laughs> Seems that way from our conversation, yeah. I think Nintendo's going to be there. Jeez. In some capacity. I mean, Nintendo's weird because they do many directs throughout the year. Like, I want to hear Pokemon news, but they're doing a direct yes. tomorrow, yeah, they have a direct, actually. Right. <laughs> so, before this podcast I actually airs, look yesterday for news on Pokemon. So, it's hard to, to gauge on that stuff. Yeah, time travel's weird. Yeah. I was going to say, I want to see some Metroid Prime news. Mm. Ooh. Oh. Had to, <laughs> had to sneak one in there. Yeah, I didn't realize I did. As I was doing it, I was like, sexy. Everybody, go see Dark Crystal. So my boring answer is, like, really boring. Gears 5. (laughs) Gears 5, Halo Infinite, and Ori 2. You're you're excited for Halo Infinite? Yeah, sure, why not? They're they're hyping Halo Infinite up a lot, actually, right now. Well, they have to. I'm still a Halo guy. Since 2001. I still didn't nope. think you'd be in, you'd be looking forward to that. He, he probably yeah. has more gamer score in MCC than you do, Fufu. <laughs> I definitely does do. Your, does your Gears excitement uh, extend to Gears Pop? <laughs> sure. But uh, one thing I was going to add is I hope that they add more than two-player co-op because uh, Gears 4 only had two players, and I hope it's it goes back to being four like Gears 3 was. Right. From so my own I, curiosity, you know who would you play with? Uh, the, th- <laughs> the three people with the strongest packs. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe a compass. But maybe we'll do like a full breakdown. Not a full, full breakdown, but we'll discuss the news next week. Is that right? Is that the plan? Notice yeah. nobody said Borderlands 3. I think that was the plan. Yep. <laughs> That's we, already, we know everything about Borderlands 3. We know it's going to be great. And there's no need to uh, look forward to anything else about it. Borderlands 2 has killed my excitement for Borderlands 3. I, I don't care about it. That might be your group, not the game's fault. I completely All agree. Right. All right, Rocker, you're taking this place. 
What about you, Nate? What are, your, what are three things you're excited for? Well, I'm appreciative that you asked. <laughs> um, <laughs> I get that reference. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm very excited about Ori and the Will of the Wisps, also known as Ori 2. Um, oh, I just forgot what it was called. No, nah, not a problem. Nice. I am, man, it's so hard. There's only two left. Um, I've got to say the unknown. Like, I'm looking to be surprised. You know, whether that's studios, because I, I believe that they said they might be announcing more studio acquisitions, but also what have those new studios that were acquired uh, last time, what have they been doing? Can we hear something about that? And then something that I just always love is that ID at Xbox sizzle reel. Oh, like, yeah. Good oh, stuff. yeah. Good I one. Just love, that just gets me going every time because I love the indies, and that sizzle reel just gets me so excited uh, for all these games that I'm going to be playing in maybe a year uh, or six months. And just the hope to squeeze a fourth one in there because I'm the last person in. Ha-ha. Um, <laughs> like the mixer giveaway or maybe there's going to be like a surprise something. Um, I just love when that happens. It's, yeah, it's it's the unknown, really. It's going back to that second choice. I'm just really excited to be surprised. I, I don't like the leaks. Uh, I really want to be surprised. Honorable mention. Mar- <laughs> Marvel's Avengers. <laughs> Doom Eternal. Cyberpunk 2077. B-Simulator. Madden 2020. <laughs> I'm definitely interested in B-Simulator. <laughs> I have Wait, absolutely like, no idea what it's It's a real about. game, Corey. I did was this fly over my you. head? I did not put it in the notes because I wanted to surprise you. <laughs> Go Google B-Simulator. You'll be excited. And be excited? Yes. Nah. Be Arthur Simulator? <laughs> I'd play that too. It better not be that. <laughs> I'm just waiting for Corey's face to see. <laughs> I mean, this is exactly what I wanted. It's what you wanted it to be, yeah. Uh, where the bees make honey. I mean, ready, yes. steady, fly, dancing with bees, pollen picker. Have a, I have a sting and I'm not afraid to use it. It can't this be good. This is what I wanted but in I this so game. I so want it. <laughs> it just can't be good. I'm so I interested just, in playing it, though. I just want to watch Corey play. I don't even have to play the game. Oh, dude, you got to stream it. Yeah, this is oh, this man. Corey has to stream this. It's coming to all consoles too. Oh, I'm t- totally down. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. Oh man, thank We're you. All right. Well, let's move on to a community question from our buddy and two of our captains, Skeptical Mario of the Mario Party. Hey, captain, Ooh. my captain. After he heard us talking about where the bees make honey, <clears throat> he knows that we'll all play bad games simply for the score, but he wonders, do we ever feel inclined to play games because they are bad? Like, does a certain kind of bad game have an appeal like a certain kind of a bad movie does? Now, honestly, bad games aren't my thing. I don't ever really play bad games because I want to, but if I play them, it's because of score or you all like watching me get mad at bad games on stream. I do, however, kind of want to play be- uh, Where the Bees Make Honey or Albedo simply because of their glowing reviews. But other than that, no, I don't really have too much draw to bad games. What about you, El? Well, you stole my answers. You should have went first. I know. I would say definitely, I don't look forward to playing the bad games but once i do there's definitely something about it that's just like a you know, like a car crash you can't stop watching it's definitely something about playing a very bad game so so you can tell everyone how bad it is afterward there's just something <laughs> about that i can uh, i can definitely agree with that and um i definitely fall into that category i i have a new appreciation for some games that a lot would con- might consider bad um just based off other games that I've played simply because they look terrible. Now, just an example. What do you that, mean by that? <laughs> okay, yeah, so that's kind of weird. So, Awesome P. A lot of people probably w- would hate Awesome P or not like it in 2019. I enjoyed Awesome P for what it was. Now, okay, I this, think I see what you're saying. My main, my the main game I want to focus on though that came to my mind immediately every time this question gets asked is a game that I. I bought day one as soon as you could buy it. I paid $10 for it simply because it looked like a piece of dog doo-doo. And that 
is Soda <laughs> Drinker Pro. God, that game is... <laughs> That's I just, was, that, that's not a game. I was legitimately hyped for it. I was so excited to play it. And it I, is the, uh, it's one of the biggest regrets in my <laughs> Xbox One gaming history as far as like buying a game day one goes. Uh, even though it was only $10, that is a terrible excuse for a game. Um, now I know that there's the whole thing is about the game within the game. Uh, with the Vivian Clark stuff, but as a whole, Soda Drinker Pro is so bad. But yeah, I was so hyped to play it. That is that that game is barely a game. That is a game of the absolute loosest sense of the word. I have played multiple mobile games that are better than that thing. It's horrible. Yeah, and I have most of the gamer score, and that that was a bonus. But I did not initially buy it. Uh, I, fi- I like thought maybe you go probably going to be an easy completion, but, uh, I didn't let what look, you know, is ultimately a pretty difficult achievement, uh, stop me from, you know, getting it because I ultimately won't get the completion in it. I wanted it because it looked like a three year old drew every single background in that game and you're freaking drinking a soda as like the main pro. gameplay <laughs> and there are missables. Yeah, there are missables. If you, know. miss it on the way, <laughs> if you miss it on the way to the level 100 or whatever it is, uh, you have to go back through. Oh, yeah. Yep, and that's why I will never complete it, because I'm not going back through. Nope. I refuse. Uh, I can't be the only one, though. <laughs> I'm sure Koosh plays bad games. Oh, yeah, yeah. I play bad games. Well, or rather, I buy bad games. Um, I was looking at my list of... You know, I was, when I was going back, I was doing the research. I was looking at my my game collection, and I sorted it by TA review or TA score. Um, and I was looking at the lowest ones, and some ones that stuck out for me were like Toro, uh, Where the Bees oh, Make terrible. Honey. terrible. Which I actually like Where the Bees Make Honey, but whatever. Um, Albedo, uh, Yasai Ninja, Kira Ninga's, Kira Nig- yeah, Okay, that guy's Revenge. Um, and, and basically anything by Rico technology. Um, they have one game that I don't own, which is Numancia, but it's a board game. So I'm probably not going to pick that up. <laughs> uh, Yaris, Alteric, Superman Returns. Although I find Superman Returns isn't that bad. It's just dated. Um, Deep Ones is pretty bad. Um, oh, no, I actually Ones have played, bad. but for the most part, now, I end up. Yeah. We played bad games, but I think the question was, did you go out of your way to play a game because you were, you were told it was bad yes absolutely like these games i heard were bad like um no i could wait to play them oh. but, <laughs> but i was excited to play them and just be like yeah man these these games are horrible and just like you know get that sweet gamer score but then also just you know bag on some of these games like how bad yasai uh and kurinaga's uh revenge is like just the controls are just so bad I will put a caveat on my answer as you know to kind of say that in the early days it wasn't as much of a an issue to to leave a game, but now I'm to the point in my backlog and and how quickly stuff is releasing that uh, sometimes I don't have time for bad games. Uh, and, and some people's reviews do uh, do stick with me. I will never play Crimson Keep thanks to Walker Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was gonna Regardless say, if it's sitting there and ready to install or not, I will never, ever turn it on. Yeah, I noticed most of the games that we mentioned are of the easy gamer score variety. So if a game like Albedo sucks, it's only a few hours, which is interesting because, you know, we'll play a crappy Iron Stout, uh, something hey, like that. Hey, watch your mouth. <laughs> I, I actually enjoyed Iron Stout. It's not very good, but I enjoyed that. But if that was a AAA game and it was forty or sixty dollars and and it was ten to twenty hours of that, you'd probably rather get the cream of the crop AAA games. So there seems to be seems to be uh, the indie games that we play most often these days, right? Mm, yeah, of course. Well, there's also a little bit of the when you spend sixty dollars on a game, they're typically you know not bad games they're not u- universally bad games i mean the only fallout one fallout 76 i, I was just about to say that's the only, <laughs> fallout 76 is the only one that metal really gear comes survive. to mind so i'm okay yeah metal gear survive 
I haven't actually played that or heard much about that one, so I don't really know. I can't really speak for that. But typically, you know, you're spending sixty dollars on a game, you're getting something of a little yeah. bit more quality. Whereas all the you actual bad games, yeah, you would hope all the, the bad games are typically indie games, and it's mostly just they don't have all this money and resources to produce something good, so it just comes out like crap. And to be fair, most of it is like five dollars or less. Yeah, like you couldn't get anyone. Well, I guess maybe you can get like Elroy, but you would never get anyone really to spend like sixty bucks on. Iron Snout. As much as I actually did kind of enjoy that, it's not a $60 game. It's a $5 game, and we all know it. Uh, I don't know. What if there's a Game of the Year version? $5? That's not even a sale price. Sale price? What do you mean sale price? What do you got, Corey? Sale good. You talking about new sales? He he snuck that one. (laughs) Sale gooey. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so... A little bit of sales uh, coming up. Not much because by the time that this comes out, and time travel is weird, um, there is likely going to be a quote-unquote big E3 sale. But the sales that we have access to at this moment, uh, I do want to just highlight. Uh, I'll just highlight one uh, for time's sake. And I would imagine that most of us have these games uh, that I'm about to mention, but in case you're a new achievement hunter or they just somehow missed your your radar, they are mostly easy gamer score and they are fun. That is right. So the Instant Indie Collection is a coll- different volumes of bundles of indie games, and they usually go on sale for deep discounts. So this one is Volume 5 in particular, it is on sale for $9.56 this week in the U.S., and it includes three games that I had a good time with. Those would be Human Fall Flat, which I realized was or is in Game Pass. I need to get Man- back to that. Manual Samuel and The Little Acre. Little Acre is a very quick with a guide point and click. Uh, really well done, if you ask me. Human Fall Flat, if you don't know, is where you uh, control a gelatinous blob of a person and get them to point a to point b uh and it's the the what do you call it the cut of the game is the how you move them and uh it's really it's really weird and it's, you know, it has physics built into it and uh it, it's just a game that is pretty unique to itself uh and then the last one that i kind of want to highlight is manual samuel which if you've been with the community for a, you know a long time at, at this point uh this was one of the z to z game of the month games and it was I, th- I think it was really well received by everyone who participated i had a blast with it uh it's another one where you, basically you take control of a person who cannot operate his extremities and parts of his body that make him uh, stay alive anymore so you have to take on that control so one trigger is a leg the other trigger is the other leg and you have to move your arms individually you have to make sure you blink and breathe and uh, it itself is a really unique game, um, and the achievements aren't too bad. The, I have not completed it yet, but that is mainly due to having to beat do the the time trials in it. I so haven't skill. spent a lot of time with that. It's a little bit of skill, um, but the game in itself is fun. And so, nine dollars and fifty cents, you're getting three really good games. Uh, I would be hard pressed to say that's 2000 to 2500 easy gamer score out of them. So that is my recommendation of the week. So what you got, Mr. Name. Tabs? <laughs> yeah, this week, um, I'm not going to talk about my tabs too much because we're running a little bit late. However, I will talk about one game that I have played in the past that's on sale now. It's Serial Cleaner. It is 449 down from 15. Um, it is a 1.65, uh, TA score. Um, and it's eight to 10 hours. This game plays a lot like Party Hard. So if you're looking for Party Hard 2, which I don't think is out yet, I could be wrong. Um, in either case, if you're looking for more Party Hard like play, uh, this game is right up your alley. You play a cleaner, um, who is a person of nefarious means who goes around and basically cleans up murder scenes or you know, any sort of illicit activity and they go around and they clean up 
the scene to get rid of evidence that would incriminate. Um, the achievements are kind of fun, and I, I, I kind of giggled when I picked this because, Corey, there's That's an me. achievement called, Hey, Listen. <laughs> I get that reference. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to get at least four enemies. That's to a reference to a... Windscape, right? <laughs> totally. It is. It is. Uh, get at least four enemies to investigate a sound decoy. This is, nice. I, I think this is the only achievement that does not have uh, a solution. There is no guide, but every, every other achievement does have a solution. So if you're having problems, and actually some of the later game, as I was looking into this, some of the later game achievements that require you to complete levels, you know, 20 different levels or complete all eight theme, movie themed levels, you can cheese them. Um, you know, if you don't want to enjoy the game and you just want to get through them, there are ways to get those that would normally take you, I don't know, half an hour or 15 minutes per level. You can get them in about a minute to two minutes, um, through a cheese method, which hopefully is still up there if you're having problems. What about you, L? I'm looking through the serial cleaner uh, list now to see if there's anything clever. TV and chill. When I was looking down the list, I saw two games that I would recommend of the co-op variety that I've mentioned before on the show, uh, Riddled Corpses and Stick Bold, the Dodgeball Adventure. Um, Stick Bold is four ninety nine. You can dodge a wrench. You can dodge a ball. <laughs> <laughs> and Riddled Corpses is, I believe, five ninety nine. dollars uh, Those aren't necessarily easy completions, but uh, they are doable after a little while. Uh, looking at the list of quick completions from the week, decent amount of games. Old favorites like Thomas Was Alone, three to four hour completion, 90% off. That's got to be pretty good. I just thought that game was okay. Everybody uh, else like loved it, but it was not that l- special for me. I, I mean, that, that's the type of game you like usually. I wouldn't say I loved it. Like but, that um, League of Evil game, kind of. Mm, that was better. Much better. Yeah. yeah I would say Thomas Is Alone is twitchy. Thomas Was Alone had that witty... British narrator. It's worth <laughs> points. I saw people in the Discord today uh, arguing over deployment, which is 50% off, so it should be 5 bucks. And TA says zero to one hour, but some people are saying they had trouble with it. Me included. Yeah? Yeah. What kind of game is it? I don't even remember. It's been too long. It's like, I remember it's, like, it's isometric. Um, I think it had some twin stick elements to it, but I wouldn't call it a twin stick shooter. Maybe shoot him up. It's yeah, it's a little bit like a twin stick shooter. Well, so not like a space shooter, but you are running around rooms and you're uh, just kind of it's kind of a death match, uh, twin stick shooter. Um, and yeah, some of the achievements are a little bit tough to get. There, like you need to get the right setup. Um, you know, you just kind of have to. Keep trying it until you get lucky uh, to get those to get those certain ones to fall. But it, it is not a super long game. But yeah, it is a little bit frustrating. All right, dear Esther, if you don't have it by now, I'm shocked. This set the walking sim genre on fire. It's two forty nine, two to three hour completion, according to TA. And Old Man's Journey has a mild discount, twenty percent off, eight dollars down from ten. Fairly easy point and click completion. That is also play anywhere. And pretty. It is pretty. Pretty repetitive. All right, so we got, for Game Pass, we got two new entries this week. First game is Dead by Daylight, the action horror game. You guys have any interest in this? Absolutely not. Yeah, you said horror, so it's not really my genre. Scaredy cat. I wouldn't say I'm scared, but uh, yeah, I don't want to play it. I believe it's one of those 5v1 games, too, or 5v... Yeah, 4v1 or something like that. I believe so. I could be thinking of something totally different too, but... I, I think you're right. I think you're right, or it's sort of kind of in the realm of Left 4 Dead, I believe. No. Okay. I think you're thinking of the type of game that's 4v1 that's Evolve, made by the same people who made Left 4 Dead. I was thinking Day- Dead by Daylight was kind of like in the same vein of Left 4 Dead. I don't know, I could be wrong. I think it's more like Friday the 13th, and it's got a ton of title updates. Oh, yeah. Okay, now I do know this game. It is kind of like Friday the 13th. You're right. It's a 2,120 gamer score because of all those title updates. It's got to be Six- better than Friday the 13th because it has Freddy yeah. Krueger and Michael <laughs> Myers and Leatherface. 6,917 TA. So some Ooh. nice ratios in there. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, we might need to boost this. <laughs> All right. L- L's the one, popular, and so. the four of us will get the achievements. That sounds good. Other game that's coming to Game Pass is Outer Wilds. I'm excited for this one. This looked neat. To not say pre-ordered in my ready-to-install list. <laughs> <laughs> this was one of those giveaways that we it got was. from the mix pot. I so don't it finally it. pays off two years later. Finally, finally pays off. For what it's worth, though, I do hear it's a good game. Uh, King's been was singing its praises uh, the day it came out. And from everybody else I've heard, it they're kind of being vague about it. And I think that's for good reason. It probably is a game you want to explore uh, on your own and just, you know, be one with the game. Yeah, probably something you're going to want to put some time into. At least it's finally coming out of uh, game preview after, man, it's been there for a while. For, I'm not sure how long. I uh, you know, think you're getting confused. You know what else Kingsman did, right? Kingsman was the first to complete another game. He, that he wasn't dealt first, with, but he was the first person we know <laughs> to do it. I'm pretty sure he was first. Well, now I have no, to look. You, you, you talk, I, I, I look. I'm, I'm talking about Outer Wilds still. Oh. He completed Outer Wilds. Did he? Did he? Yeah. Yeah, he's the 11th person on TA to do it. Yeah, he's got he's got them all. You did. That's Took him what I'm, five days. Five minutes. No, but yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So this guy all of a sudden knows how to play games? <laughs> Way to go, what? Kingsman. That's where, cool. Where, yeah. You probably aren't as good at Descenders, right? I mean, just... Uh, I do have an update on Descenders. They put a patch out and they fixed the achievement, supposedly. Yeah, but does it make you want to play the game? I always I I got it in game preview. I always want to play Descenders. Well, I never see you playing it. Well, that's because it had no achievements <laughs> up until a few weeks ago. Yeah, way to go, Kingsman. I get a little confused because there's this Outer Wilds and then there's another one, Outer Worlds. <laughs> yeah, it's coming uh, out. Outer later. Worlds. That's the Borderlands esque one, isn't it? Yeah. More oh, on that that's next what I'm thinking of. Yeah. I was on the cover on one of the uh, Game Informers. Too many outer games. The crap. Yeah. All right. We also got some f- quote unquote free games coming this month in way of games of gold. Now, I previous months, I've been kind of harsh on them. This month, actually, in my opinion, isn't that bad. So the first game, NHL 19, June, which you can download anytime June 1st to the 30th. Now, a hockey isn't my thing. Don't much care for it. But that's pretty decent of a game, EA, EA title. You guys in hockey at all? Name one quarterback that you know in the NHL. Quarterback's the thing in the <laughs> NHL? <laughs> totally. Uh, Brady Tom. <laughs> yeah, once upon a time, I loved the NHL series. 10, NHL 10, 11, and 12, and 13. That's when I played NHL a lot. There's the EA SHL mode where you can play with your friends against randoms in a in a league. It's a lot of fun. See, I know none, n- oh, yeah, none of yeah none of them were into achievements though, so that was the only downfall. So we played for the f- ah, no, but it was a good time. See, I know nothing about hockey, by. so I can't really get excited for this. The the one thing I do like about this though is my nephews are. Sports fans, they like playing sports and all that, so this is something that they'll probably enjoy. So, more likely than not, this is going to end up on my tag. As long as you uh, keep your gold. Yeah. I think I got another 2K6 game around here somewhere. Uh, next game, which which is coming, that which you can download June 16th to July 15th, Rivals of Aether. I believe I'm, I believe I'm pronouncing that right. Sure. And... I have mixed feelings on this one. I think this will probably be a decent game. It looks like Smash Bros, but made in like the 80s. It's like all pixel and whatnot. I don't much like those graphics, but a Smash Bros ripoff, eh, it might be pretty good. I mean, that's that's the problem with all these Smash clones is that they don't have the character recognition. They don't have the brand. Yeah. Um, so it's really kind of hard to get started it's really unfair to them to uh try to compete with uh smash well don't make your game look exactly like it but with crappy graphics and i won't compare but, it to you but this game does have some recognition because they've got uh if i'm, if I'm remembering correctly they've got shovel knight 
They've got Juan. They've got Ori. I think they. This is the one where they brought in uh, other indie characters, right? No, 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 Juan. But yeah, they do have Ori and they oh, have yeah. Shovel Knight. No, that, was, that was a different game. I forgot. Okay. Which one. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, one's coming up one. soon. You were, you were two. You had them. You had two of them, right? The only two guests. Yeah, I, I have both these games. Uh, I cannot remember the name of the other one, but yeah, I have that one as well, which is why I was getting them confused. But yeah, Brawl Out, I think. That is the game. I'm pretty sure that's a Smash clone, so that might be it. But yeah, that's pretty cool uh, to have that. Now, this next game is what I'm most excited for out of this month, and that's Portal Still Alive, available June 1st to the 15th. So I've played the original Portal in the orange box, Love that game. That game is phenomenal. And I've never played Still Alive. So this is cool. I'm, this is a good ad that I'm looking forward to. All right. This is the triumph. I'm writing it down. You'll get that later, Foo Foo. <laughs> oh, we're, I'm going to send you some links. Uh, boy. Beef jerky. And that was so bad. God. <laughs> <laughs> And in the last game that's available is Earth Defense Force 2017, which is available June f- 16th to the 30th. Dude, we're getting all the Earth Defense Forces now, I guess. <laughs> I was going to say, didn't we? We just got one of these last month, too, right? Yes. Yes, we did. I don't remember okay. the year, but it was another one. It was the bug one or something. Yeah, it's, that sounds right. I watched a video on this thing. It looks cool. It looks like it, it's like a mech fighting game. I'll probably try it. I don't know if it's any good or not. It at least looks neat. So with that, let's move into our contest corner. First up, as always, is the BCM or frame holes and frame holes completion challenge. Category we're going to go over this week is, of course, which is a completed game that contains the standalone word of in the title. Corey, you got any recommendations for this? Yes, I do. Um, a harder one is quote unquote harder uh, is one that I just mentioned at the top of the show TMNT the danger of the ooze another one is one that I mentioned uh, probably a month ago or so but Max the curse of the brotherhood not too hard of a game and it was games with gold way back when now getting a little bit easier we have shadow of loot box it's a rattle like a game it's one of the longer rattle like a games but by longer I mean 22 three, minutes. Three hours instead of one oh. or half. And then the easiest of my bunch would be Planet of the Eyes, which is uh, a point and click, like more of a limbo style, you was... know, move left to right game. So all of those are super easy. I don't even really need to go into a, a lot of detail, but there you go. Planet of the Eyes. That might actually be something I would be looking into. I've got a achievement in that for the RTDO, so I need to get back to that. Now's the best time for you, then. Really is. What about you, Nate? Well, <laughs> so I chose a game, and I just went and looked, and it seems that they it is a stack of digital only that's been pulled <laughs> from the store. So if you're like me and you've got a large backlog, hopefully you've got this one. Uh, and you might want to check it out. Uh, Legend of Korra. So I played this. I, I got it when it was on sale because it went on a pretty good discount a ways back. Um, and I picked up the 360 because I figured why not. Um, it's an Avatar game. So it's in the Avatar series. However, it Last is not an Avatar game. It's not an Avatar game in the fact that you can 100% it in five minutes. Um, it is going to take a little bit of time. But it's kind of enjoyable. I'm I'm actually liking the combat. Um, and I just wanted to point out a couple of the achievements really quickly. Uh, there's Jill of All Trades, just because they're a little bit sneaky. Uh, there's Jill of All Trades instead of Jack of All Trades. And that is to get all or to complete all of the tutorials. Now, tutorials are basically a little um, help menu that will kind of pop up on screen. And you kind of – it's in front of you. It's an overlay while you're – fighting and if you do the things that are in the tutorial you do not have to but if you do them they'll be crossed off now this achievement is to to cross them all off and i think there's maybe four or five of these if you miss them you have to run all the way back through the game because if you do level select they do not show up so yeah so pay attention but you're gonna have to do two runs of this game anyway so um 
if you miss it on your first run, make sure to get it on your second run. Uh, the second uh, achievement is called Good Girl. Good Girl is basically <laughs> uh, you have there are these segments in the game. I think there's maybe four of them where you get on this um, dog looking polar bear creature, um, and you basically run through flying bison. You run through these alleys, uh, and it looks very much like Rocker's favorite game, Space Wolf. Oh gosh. <laughs> whatever it's called infinity, that running running. infinity runner infinity infinity runner thank you you're basically running through these quarters you have to when you get to a 90 degree turn you actually have to hit right or left on the stick and you choose from three lanes you either have to jump or slide and this achievement is for getting through one of those from start to end without uh, having any sort of uh, crash and they say to do this on the second level once you get the hang of it they've got videos so you can kind of follow it but yeah it's frustrating just like infinity runner uh, and the last one I want to talk about is that escalated quickly just because I love that meme. <laughs> um, and it's for, it's for completing chapter seven, which I am not up to yet. I, like I said, I picked this up because of the RTDL. Um, this was one of my achievements, which I just got today, which was, um, for, I think it was countering. No, no, it was for performing finishing moves on a hundred enemies. And I found a good spot to do that, uh, in the middle of chapter four. I realized there's not a solution for that. So maybe I'll go ahead and add a solution, uh, for the, where that was in chapter four. But I found a really good place where I could get five of those right, in, right after a checkpoint. So I would, uh, kill five guys. I would let the sixth guy kill me. I would reload the checkpoint and I would get, I got 50% of them in about, I don't know, seven minutes. But it's a fun game. Unfortunately, it's digital only, so I think you might kind of be uh, SOL if you don't already have this in your backlog. So I'm sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I probably should have done that research earlier. I, I'm pretty sure there's no physical. So, L? Believe it or not, I have played The Legend of Korra. Yeah, I, I don't believe and it. And I have a question. I've Ooh. played The Legend of Cory. Go ahead. Well, The Legend of Korra Left has some personality that. in it. Oh, <laughs> you got well, I me. <laughs> I was gonna ask: Did you find it hard at all? Because oh, it's been a few years, but I remember one level being so hard. Yeah, they. I um, don't remember which one. I was actually. Yeah, I was thinking about that because you know I just started it today, and I was thinking that the combat was actually kind of challenging. And I'm on the normal difficulty. Um, the final level of difficulty is is that you have to get for an achievement is the one above this, which is unlocked Dream. when you when you complete the normal level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's um the developer is Platinum Games, so these are the guys that that did the Transformers game. They kind of like their their combat. Um, it was challenging and punishing, and I finally figured out how to uh, beat that first encounter. Because they'll throw uh, three element benders at you, a fire, an earth, and a, uh, a water, all at the same time. And they're just like, they're three on one in you. And you, okay. don't, really, you don't really know how to fight uh, yes. at that point. You're just kind of figuring out. And you only have the water bending skill, so, which is kind of the weakest, but it's, it's ranged. So it's, it's good for that. But, so it was basically learning without being told you know, exactly what to do. You were, you're just trying to figure out, okay, well, how do I survive this encounter? And once you get past that, the game really opens up and it get the combat actually becomes easier and, and better. Okay, cool. Sounds like a final of the show. I noticed that the last stage you finished was chapter three and I finished up to chapter five. It looks like there's eight or nine levels. So yeah, maybe I haven't run into the wall that you ran into. Maybe, but. uh, put it out of my mind. Anyway, I have lots of, of games to quickly go through. Uh, the easier of ones are the Path of Modus, Rise of Insanity, and The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. Uh, medium level completion might be Wheel of Fortune, and some harder games might be Rise, The Son of Rome, and uh, any of the Gears of War games. I think those have of in them. I wanted to say Wheel of Fortune or Rise, but yeah. Well, you could always cut and paste. Kenny, what about you? So I have the games I recommend if you want to go to easier route <clears throat> there's a couple of them the ACA new geo king of fighter games oh gosh nice 96 95 97 98 <laughs> I believe as the numbers go up they get easier mm. not 
real sure, though. I am by no means good at AC a game, so I'll take that with a grain of salt. The other game that I want to talk about is Age of Booty. Booty! There it is. I knew someone had to say something about that. So this, uh, like I mentioned earlier in the show, <clears throat> this was another game that I dived a while ago. I don't even remember when I dived this one, and I'm too lazy to look it up. If only there was a site that would tell you. That's why I'm too lazy to look it up. Don't feel like it. And I decided to go back to this because there's an achievement on my RTDO. And this was another one where I started playing it, and I'm like, this is really fun. It's If you don't know, it's kind of like that game uh, Catan, but more like an RTS type of a thing. Um, I'm really enjoying it. Unfortunately, close your ears, Corey. It's a 200 pointer game. Oh, I already knew that. Yeah. It's BLA, but it is still fun. If you like strategy games, I, this is something you might want to try out. I don't, it is a little challenging, but I don't think it's the kind of thing where you just can't do it, but that's another game. Thank you, RTDL. I got to experience this game because of it. So with that, let's take on to our final segment, Proclamation Point. Take it away, L. Proclamation Point. Best host ever, Big Al, has reached a new milestone. That's debatable. (laughs) Master debatable. Speaking of which, my completion percentage was 69%. Almost made it a whole show. Wow. What? Okay, then. Did that clip? No, it was perfect. Oh, good. I'll do it again. <laughs> Glad you all liked it. <laughs> we are all so <laughs> mature. <laughs> <It's reached. laughs> Sorry, I'm... Um, just taking <laughs> feedback from our community about uh, raising the maturity level. I would have done it three times normally. J Black has reached a new milestone of 10,000 achievements. <laughs> Champ of Vayner's Elephant 77, 11,000 achievements. NBA Kirkland has obtained an achievement on 1,550 consecutive days. That's a lot of days. That's a lot of nuts. Elephant 77 has reached a new milestone of 250,000 gamer score. Some guy who likes Star Trek has 550,000 <laughs> gamer score. And the Doctor Who is Chin, 700,000 gamer score. That's just absurd considering he really didn't even play on the 360. He's just played on the one, so... He's a machine. That's a lot of game score. He's a robot. All right. TA score. Ooh. Oh, X the hero. Oh, you're not a zero. <laughs> Sexy Xy. Everyone that's million. not in the Discord will not understand that. <laughs> and they're better off. X the hero has 1,150,000,000 wow. million, million something TA score. A lot of numbers that he can't read. And then somebody that we used to know, Mighty Mango, has 1,350,000 TA score. Toad Style Stanum is in the top 100 <laughs> TA leaderboards for Windows Phone. LAX Jesta is in the top 50,000 of the TA leaderboard. Kingsman 2625 is now in the top 10 of the Washington Gamer Score leaderboard for Open World. Wow. That's very specific, sir. Very specific. And number one in escape room games. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Is that breaking news? Uh, I just made it up, so sure. <laughs> he was the first to complete that never, never yeah, out. Never out. Yeah, never never out. out. And, and, and yeah. one leaves. Which, one leaves. Right. Yeah. If it was right. if it's not a genre, it should be. Enough about Kingsman. He's boring. <laughs> number one in our hearts is what you meant to say is Buffs, who... Had a birthday on June 3rd. Happy buff Happy day. Birthday. Happy birthday. I hope you were in the buff in your birthday suit. <laughs> <laughs> what? And I hope you had some cake, but much like one of the Game Pass games, it was a lie. Ayo. And, and with that, the balcony is closed. Dun, 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 dun. I don't get that, but okay. Come on. Goosh. <laughs> I was not listening. Oh. <laughs> not going to lie. All right. When you listen back to the podcast, you'll 
You'll get it. All right. Well, with that, I think our time here is done. If you like the show, please like and review us on your platform of choice. If you would like to get in contact with us, we're on the Twitter. You can send us your Twitter tweets at Achievements101. If you would like to talk to all of, all of us, you can join the community at our Discord, discord.io slash ah101. Once again, every Saturday, I will be streaming. So please come join uh, the chat. Mixer is mixer.com slash ah101. We will be doing a giveaway during the stream this time. And also, lastly, don't forget the Xbox E3 stream on Mixer to get that mix pot, get some goodies. All right, get guys. some Sea of Thieves uh, skins, <laughs> of course. <laughs> eh, it's free. Who cares? But with that, class is dismissed. See you next week. Later. The Achievement Hunting 101 podcast is proudly brought to you by Achievaboo. Bamboo for all your achievement hunting needs. We know that picky pandas prefer premium perfect bamboo, so we ensure nothing but the finest quality. Achievaboo's growers start at the source, scarfing out the finest soil to plant only the most luxurious of bamboo. From there, we sprinkle the soil with hand ground Dorito crumbs and sprinkle it with our secret combination of water, electrolytes, and Mountain Dew to ensure quality growth from planting until harvest. It's this combination of love and gamer fuel that sets our bamboo above all others. So if you're a panda who needs some extra energy for marathon gaming sessions, look no further than Achievaboo, made by gaming pandas for gaming pandas. Whee! That's enough, Lugo. We're just keeping it light, boss. Yeah, I don't need light. Need you focused on the mission. What mission? We're basically poking a dead dog with a stick. We have our orders. Locate survivors, leave the city immediately. The radio command from outside the storm wall. We send in the cavalry, we go home. Hello and welcome to this new game club game, Spec Ops The Line. Uh, Spec Ops is from uh, 2012 was developed by Jaeger Development and published by 2K Games. This game didn't sell very well. Uh, I heard that it only sold 250,000 copies during the first year of its release, which is not a lot considering uh, the budget this game had. It is a triple A game. Uh, with me today I have Dynable. Hello. And Skeptical Mario. Hello. So, Let's start off. What expectations did you have going in? I had quite a bit. I've heard a lot about this game through uh, word of mouth, especially about one scene in particular, which made, uh, which had like articles written about it. Uh, we didn't get to that scene yet for this uh, this week, so I won't really talk about it. I mean, I've heard about the game as like a realistic depiction of the effects of combat and like um, post traumatic stress disorder or whatever. I would disagree about realistic, but it's certainly more realistic than the average shooter. It's got a certain kind of realism. Yeah, it still, it still kind of has like that dude bro thing going on, at least at the beginning. Yeah. Hey, Gears of War kind of shooter almost, just like the banter. It's definitely reminded me of Gears of War a lot. Yeah, I'm not going to go into too much detail, because I've played this before, I know what's going to happen, and I can say that it's intentional, and that the tone will gradually shift. Mm -hmm. The game opens with a on-rails shooting sh section from a helicopter where you shoot other helicopters. I had totally forgotten that this is how the game opens and uh, I was probably more confused this time than last time I played it as I thought I'd started a, the wrong save or something. Yeah, the first mission is just like, oh, you're in a helicopter and you have infinite ammo, blow up a bunch of other helicopters. Judging uh, from what the, the tone of, of the game is, it seems like that's a very odd place to start. The tone is all over the place in this game, and there's a lot of uh, cognitive dissonance going on. Most of it is intentional, and some of it I'm not sure about. Mm-hmm. But uh, there's a lot of conflicting ideas that you have in your head at the same time and trying to uh, make sense of. After the brief helicopter scene where you shoot down other helicopters and you don't know the context, you just shoot down other helicopters without knowing why, the game starts proper with 
an introduction uh, of the playable character Walker. I haven't even written down his first name. I don't know if I've heard his first name. He's not the most interesting character, and uh, at, l- at least not from the start. Yeah. Well, that introductory scene, we don't really get anything about him. He's just talking about this Conrad guy. John Conrad was a soldier who led the 33rd Battalion. They were stationed in Afghanistan, but a huge sandstorm that has been going on for months uh, uh, swept over Dubai and they can't make contact with the people inside. The 33rd Battalion volunteered to go into Dubai and try to uh, evacuate as many as possible. Unfortunately, they were denied, but they went in anyway. In the introductory scene, it is explained that Dubai has been isolated from the rest of the world for six months, and that's about the same time as the 33rd Battalion has been inside of Dubai. It sets up uh, the expectation where you're going to go in, you don't know what you're going to find. Very mysterious. You play as uh, Walker, who is the captain of the Delta Squad, which is a three-man team sent in to investigate the status of Dubai and if there are any survivors. Uh, Your mission is very simple. It's get in, find a source of a transmission, get out, report. But things take a turn. You very early find the transmission. When you do so, you also find dead soldiers and some armed locals who are not very happy about you being there. Yeah, they're referred to as insurgents, and I don't know if that's... I don't really know the context of that, whatever insurgency they're talking about. It seems like there's some kind of society that's formed in the last six months. Dubai is in the middle of a desert. It is completely dependent uh, on uh, outside resources, food and water, so if this would be a realistic scenario, which it isn't. There's no way there would be sandstorm for six months. Yeah. Dubai would be a complete mess. Yeah, it's definitely like a post-apocalyptic feel to it. And compared to like a zombie apocalypse, say a sandstorm apocalypse is, I don't know, I can suspend my disbelief for that. There are plenty of survivors and all of them seem to want you dead. Uh, They're not the brightest of the bunch. They seem very suicidal, at least on easier difficulties. They initiate a firefight. Well, the player can initiate the firefight if they choose, but uh, no matter what you do, uh, there will be a fight with the locals, the insurgents. It feels weird uh, calling them insurgents. Uh, this, This is not a war. This is a disaster area. Yeah. Calling them insurgents feel like the wrong term, but they are survivors and Mm -hmm. uh, they are rather desperate. They do not seem to like the American military very much. The game, or at least the subtitles, refer to them as insurgents, so I was wondering what they're insurging against. They are probably us trying to stay alive, but uh, well, we we will see where the story takes us. What we know in the beginning is that uh, there are survivors, they are armed, and they are not very happy with... uh, the American military for some reason. Instead of retreating, Delta decides to uh, fight their way through the uh, uh, attacking forces, contradicting their orders to leave as soon as possible. They pick up a transmission from the 33rd Battalion that uh, they are under attack and uh, they request assistance, which you decide to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't go very well. Delta arrives uh, to see most of the squad dying or already dead. There's no way to prevent the last member of the Alpha Squad uh, from uh, being executed. Yeah. He lives for a, f- a few more minutes and uh, during that time he can uh, give you information that they someone named McPherson was uh, taken to the nest. Is there an option not to kill him? I believe he will die anyway. Okay. Yeah. You're in like a hostage situation and the hostage taker's yelling at you and Oh, okay. I'm I'm thinking of I'm thinking of like later on. Oh bet. yeah. Yeah, no your your squad mates are making it clear uh that uh if you do if you don't do anything he's going to kill the guy, so Okay. I just shot 
I just shot as many of them as I could. I'm rather sure that you cannot save him. He is going to die anyway. Yeah, this game is good at making you feel like you don't have a choice. Uh, well, because you really don't. But it's make it makes you feel bad for having to do what you the game wants you to do. You haven't seen much yet, but there are play choices, and they are. You might not even realize that you are mm-hmm. making the choices. If you're not following a guide, you will probably you will probably realize this rather soon. Yeah, I am not looking at a guide, but I did look at the achievement list, and the achievement names indicate that there are choices. And they are very easy to pick up uh, later if you want to go for them. There are There is a chapter select. And you have to play this game twice yeah. anyway if you want the completion. If you're playing on the on a higher difficulty. I didn't uh, ask you if you are playing on easy or a higher difficulty. I did go straight to the, the third difficulty level. So I only have to do two playthroughs. I'm playing normal. This is a very frantic game. If you, you just sit down and play through it. You don't really have time to uh, reflect upon much that is happening. And I think that... Two playthroughs actually make sense for this game, uh, which you will find later. I know that some do not agree with me, but I didn't. Uh, I wasn't too annoyed with having to play it twice to complete it. I actually wanted to get back to it immediately to see uh, what else I could find. Yeah, I thought the the chapters were fairly short. I finished uh, what we have to play up to like in an hour and a half, I think. Maybe it was like two hours. This might be the longest stretch that we play. None of the other will be more than mm-hmm. one hour and a half. The team decides to uh, try to save McPherson, acknowledging that they are ignoring their direct orders. They stumble upon a building which is blaring music very loudly, uh, and there's a voice on the radio that declares that the ceasefire has ended. Delta Squad uh, decides to figure out... Uh, if the 33rd Battalion are okay or not, or if they have been uh, uh, all killed by the insurgents. There's a big ambush with a lot of insurgents, uh, which is cut off by a sandstorm. After a little while, you drop through a roof of a hotel, I guess, because of all the sand. I think that's it's a rather fun set piece. I did not expect to... Uh, fall through a roof after running on sand dunes. It's weird how, because of the damage done to the environment from the sandstorm, it's not clear where you are. It just seems like you're in a a desert, but you're actually on top of a a building, and a very nice building, turns out. Yeah, there's a brief combat section in there. Sooner or later, the insurgents decides they've had enough after you have killed many, (laughs) many of them. There are you kill so many, so well. You kill so many in this game. Yeah, can we? Is now a good time to talk about that? Because I mean, like I said, I was just suspending my disbelief earlier. But there's a lot. You you kill a lot of people. The amount of the number of people that the game throws at you is strange. Yeah, I'm not keeping a kill count, but uh, there's tr- three guys going into the city, and uh, we are well, not even two chapters in, and the uh, number of uh, persons you have killed is probably up in three yeah. digits already. Yeah, it's a little ridiculous that there's the only three people on your team and you go through dozens and dozens of other guys. Yeah, that's a part of the cognitive dissonance. The story doesn't really acknowledge that aspect. Mm-hmm. It feels intentional. It feels like that's part of the atmosphere they're setting up. Or they had to make some concessions to the publisher they paid a lot of money for this game, and uh, I'm sure that they wanted uh, yeah maybe the, wanted a lot of people to buy it. The original version that they had were a lot slower with a lot uh, less combat. They did rework it to make it more actiony than the original vision. Let's see where were we? Uh, the insurgents throw down C4 through the roof. You have a last second escape through a door before everything blows up behind you. On your team you have Captain Walker and also Adams and Lugo. Lugo is a bit of a joker and Adams is the more professional of the bunch. And he suggests trying to talk to the survivors. They were supposed to save them, not kill them. 
but the rest of the team do not see the point. Uh, the team stumble into a discussion between uh, an uh, American, uh, who is referred to as Agent Castavin, uh, who apparently is leading the insurgents against the 33rd Battalion. I'm not clear uh, how that all works out. It's like if That feels like something that'll be resolved later. Well, Castavin is resolved rather soon. Yeah, yeah he is. He is, yeah. You walk through an empty refugee camp. The team finds a wall of executed soldiers, American soldiers from the 33rd Battalion. You also find Castavin uh, violently interrogating a member of the 33rd. You surprise him and the, the soldier grabs Castavin's gun mm-hmm. and kills him. And this is, this is McPherson, oh. the guy we were looking for. Yeah. Okay, th- this is the part I was asking about earlier. Is is this is there a choice here? Yes, there is. You you can either shoot him or let him leave. I made the mistake whenever he kept backing up, I shot in the air thinking he would stop moving, and then my teammate just opened fired on him. So he still died, so I was like, I don't know if I, I couldn't tell if I had a choice there or not. But you did have a choice there. Yeah, I let him go. Should we I know the differences here. Should we discuss it or should we keep it in the dark? Well, I yeah, I'm not sure that the differences have come up because I don't know that I've seen him again. You did see him again. He he went down and sets up an ambush for you with... Oh, oh he, he, he was that first guy that came around the corner then? Yeah, they are not ready for you if you, if you shoot them and go down. I don't think there's any soldiers there at all. Uh, at this point, McPherson believes that you are CIA the same as Castavin. Uh, that was... Uh, revealed uh, during the interrogation that Castavin was uh, working for the CIA. He does not think too fondly of the 33rd who has gone against uh, America. They have gone rogue. It, but that part was kind of weird for me, just like, going, I don't know, for a military shooter? It's weird shooting like another, like other American soldiers. There's something just a little weird about that to me, but I guess that probably plays into like the bigger picture, I guess, of the game. It is weird. It is, your squad mates comment on that. They do. Uh, immediately after that part uh, you see the 33rd apparently uh, killing civilians and as soon as they see you they open fire and uh, at this point at this part you are shooting american soldiers and they do comment that uh, we are not supposed to do this but it is self defense you, you they will kill you if you do not shoot them at least in terms of the game objective it seems to me like you could I don't know, fall back or something. You're not given the option to fall back at any time. But uh, that's what they were supposed to do. That's what what Mm -hmm. their orders were. But uh, the Delta team decides to push forward. And so far, it's not gone their way. Uh, The survivors they were supposed to rescue, they've killed hundreds of. The uh, Alpha team, well, Alpha squad that they were tried to save everyone died they found mcpherson and was supposed to save him they murdered him as well so they're not having a very good day at the job no they're not yeah after the firefight with the american military the team discussed the situ- situation and walker believes that uh, conrad w- wouldn't turn his back on the u.s but he's not sure of the 33rd's motivation. He thinks that there's been some infighting that someone has taken over or s- splintered the group. Uh, he also believes that they are trying to take over Dubai for reasons unknown. Mm-hmm. That's what it seems like. Shortly after, the team finds the 33rd rounding up civilians. Uh, and then they decide to save them. Uh, there's a big fight in a mall. Sometimes there are civilians thrown into the mix. I accidentally shot a few of them. Yeah, my bad. I shot one too. I was just like, "Shit!" <laughs> I I I saw one that I avoided shooting, but I may have I may have shot some other ones without ne- noticing. Yeah, there's it's a very big area in a mall, and uh, there's a lot of soldiers and a lot of movement. The game doesn't even acknowledge if you yeah. shoot civilians at that point. It's very frantic. The only difference I notice is that they have a, a blue reticule instead of a red one. Yeah, yeah but uh, this is a very action-packed game, and deciding not to shoot at that point seems... yeah. You basically have to know that there are civilians running out there. You've been fighting soldiers the entire time, so it's I believe most players accidentally shoot the first civilian running 
uh, across the room. Uh, to end the big fight in the mall, you shoot out a big window which pours in sand through most of the building. I'm, I'm loving those set pieces with the sand. There are other moments that you can use the sand without specifically I've been told uh, that you have the option. Uh, I don't mm. know if... Uh, I think there were a few roofs you could shoot yeah. out earlier to take out the enemies. I haven't been looking for sand things that much, but I have seen a couple of them. That's much more important if you're playing on uh, mm -hmm. higher difficulties, since you can take out up maybe five enemies at a time if you find a good spot to drop sand. Yeah, I'll be able to look out for that for my the, the last playthrough on the hardest difficulty. After destroying the wall, letting in all the sand, there are a lot of civilians showing up, not happy at all with the Delta Squad wanting them gone. They decide that they've done enough. Most of the civ civilians were taken by the 33rd. During a cutscene, the team picks up a signal of uh, CIA agent Daniels. He is being inter interrogated and possibly tortured by the 33rd. And then the team decides to save him. That's the end of chapter 4. Uh, you do take a few more steps and you get a rather nice view setting up mm -hmm. chapter 5 uh, of skyscrapers covered in sand. Yeah, that's another situation where uh, i thought they were just like on the desert like almost like they were walking away from the city but then it turns out they're actually on on top of a building they were on top of a building and then they jump down a floor and look out and they're down at these skyscrapers that are covered in sand yeah i really liked uh, the way chapter four ended and you had this huge vista of skyscrapers covered in sand from two sides and a big hole in the middle it's very cinematic. I'm appreciating those set pieces. So going through and taking notes, uh, I noticed that this game is very dense. This It's not a long game, but uh, they certainly have packed things into it. Uh, there is a lot of information that you cannot possibly uh, mm -hmm. process if you just play through it as a normal shooter. Uh, there's a lot that happened in uh, these four chapters and the rest are not yeah. going to be any different. Uh, it can be difficult to get a grasp of the situation and you're not supposed to, to have an understanding of events yet anyway. Uh, I was surprised going back to it to see just how uh, packed it was. Uh, there's also collectibles you can find with additional information that I found to be uh, rather interesting, but I didn't look at them this week. Yeah, because I'm not using a guide, so I only found a couple of the collectibles, uh, but I hadn't examined them to see what additional information I have. I'll have to remember to do that next time. I believe you can do it uh, in the main menu before you start the game. Uh, you can also see which chapters you have picked up collectibles and uh, jump between them if you want mm -hmm. to pick them up later. The achievement list is actually really straightforward and easy with the exception from for completing it on the hardest difficulty. Uh, the achievements have you kill like a couple thousand people with various weapons. Yeah, and you will do that naturally. You won't have to grind for anything. There, you murder so many yeah. in this game. It's ridiculous. Any ideas where the story is going? Oh, I mean, I have some ideas. I feel like uh, one guy is going to be bad. One one guy is going to be bad. Connor. Conrad. Is that, is that his name? Con yeah, Conrad. I think he's going to be bad. Like, I think he's. I think he's like he's like the the main brain behind all the the U.S. soldiers killing the civilians. Yeah, Walker really looks up yeah, to Conrad. That's why I think that's going to be the twist. He's going to be bad. Yeah, in the opening, I don't think I mentioned this, but in the opening, uh, Walker s says that uh, he was mortally injured and saved by uh, Conrad, who carried him through a battlefield and saved his life. Yeah, so he definitely looks up to him, and he trusts him, even though we we don't have any information about what he's been doing. No, and we haven't heard from him yet there's been a there's been a recording where we heard uh, his voice saying that uh, things were going bad in dubai but that's it so far yeah i wonder when he's gonna show up and why is the cia fighting the 33rd battalion we'll find out next chapter maybe 
I hope so. Maybe. Next week we will play through chapters 5 through 8. Uh, it will probably be a bit shorter than this week. There's no achievement that marks the end of chapter 8, but you will probably going to want to put down your controller at that point anyway. Uh, there's a big scene coming up. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm looking forward to next week. The f- things will really get going starting next week. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this story goes. From what I've heard, it uh, gets very intense. It has already started off as intense, so we'll see. It will be intense mm-hmm. in a different way. Thanks for joining me, Dynable and Skeptical Mario. Thank you. Thanks for having us on. Have a nice day, everyone. Hey, you want to earn so many achievements? Then try Gamer Gummies! Gummies for people who need sugar, caffeine, more sugar, and Adderall all in one convenient chew. With all new flavors like Twitch Berry. Are the berries twitching or will you be twitching? It doesn't matter, you'll be totally wired. Be careful though, you're gonna frag so many noobs. Noob aside. What's that? You want passion fruit? Well how about button mashing fruit? Made with stallion. Real stallion. And not the horse kind. Eat gamer gummies and you might get fired for playing so many video games. But that's okay because you'll be too wired to care and then you'll have even more time to earn achievements and less time to waste at that silly thing you called a job. Platformers! You'll be good at them. This gummy isn't for casual gamers. It's for gamers who want abnormally fast reflexes. Beat Gianna Sisters' twisted dreams on your first attempt because you're that wired. Chariot can be beaten with one hand because your reflexes will be that good. You'll be earning achievements so fast, Microsoft will be like, slow down. And you'll be like, piss off and punch Bill Gates in the face with your wired fists. You'll be so wired all the time that all of your responsibilities will be like achievements. Achievement dishes, achievement laundry, achievement taxes, achievement cooking, achievement eating, achievement driving, achievement having babies. You'll have so many babies. One million babies. Give Twitch Bear to your babies and they'll be good at first person shooters. They'll be unable to blink. People will see them gaming and think that they have no eyelids. They'll think that your babies are snakes. They'll ask your babies to slither and they'll do it because they'll be so wired, but they'll do it while still earning all the kill streaks. And then they'll be recruited for esports. And they'll compete against actual esports people. And they'll dominate esports. And they'll get their very own channel on Mixer. Hey, go with the shirt thing. Don't gamble on your gamer score needs. Eat gamer gummies. The gummies that will make you earn achievements faster than Avatar wishes it could. So wired. May contain redemption tonight. What's up, everybody? X the Hero and Foof here, uh, which is an unusual combination, by the way, as we have never actually had any airtime before. No, this is cool. This is a first time. I'm liking this. Yeah. um, Some new voice combinations for all y'all. I still got to throw that southern thing in there. But uh, we are here today to do a review of sorts, I guess you'd call it a review, for Dragon's Lair Trilogy. Woohoo! Woo. Game of the year for me, I don't know about you. Um, I don't think I can call this game of the year. <laughs> I, I, I don't know where to put this on the scale. <laughs> yeah, it's... It definitely something. It is definitely a thing. I... <laughs> Yeah, I don't I don't really know. So I guess the first thing that we really should say is I have no nostalgia for this. I've never played the game and I, I you did I don't think you've actually seen the video. Well, you haven't, you weren't in Mixer and I haven't sucked on YouTube yet. <laughs> but this was my, I I streamed the game and that was my first time playing it. I knew nothing about this game going in except that it was an adventure game. We're Pretty much on the same page there. I saw, hey, relatively easy thousand gamer score, because we all know that's what I do, and I got it at a discounted price. Even better. Which I'm sure we'll talk about later. Oh, yes. Um, do we want to go into the gameplay, for lack of a better term? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I... All right. I, I don't even... I say gameplay for lack of a better term, because... It's quick time event the game for 90 minutes, two hours. Yeah, it's just... That's that's it. There is no gameplay. It is you click up, down, left, right, or A. It's like if you were to take a Telltale game, take out all the storytelling <laughs> stuff where you know your decisions factor into it, and get rid of all of the puzzles, and make actually have absolutely no dialogue. And that's it. <laughs> and also 
take out the likable characters. I feel like you'd still like their interactions, even if there was no dialogue. Um, I, yeah, I kind of like Dirk. I'm not gonna lie; there were a few scenes in this <laughs> game that made me laugh. And Dirk, the heroic knight. That's uh, when you think heroic knight, you do not think the name Dirk. That's fair. Yeah, <laughs> that made me giggle. I'm not gonna lie on that one. Uh, yeah, I'll agree with that sense. I like, I don't have any real attachment to him, but I died plenty of times. Oh my god! And I did actually, the di- the dying, the death sequences were rather enjoyable. <laughs> they were, there were a couple of good ones. And I, I think it, again, gameplay, it's tough. Um, You either click the right button or you don't. It's not like a Telltale game where it's like mash A, and if you don't mash A, then you just get hit, and then you can keep going in the fight. It's if you don't press the right combo, you die instantly, and then you restart. So the game's not very forgiving in that sense, because you some of the checkpoints are there's like a good bit between some of them. And I'm not yeah. I don't mean like five, ten minutes, but definitely a minute and a half, two minutes, which of rapid fire button mashing, it it takes a while to get back if you mess up. Oh yeah, that, I mean that really added some struggles for me. And especially it kind of got to the point where it's just like God, now I got back to this stupid place. I got to do this whole stupid section again, and I just don't want to... Ah. I, had lo- I had lots of those moments. <laughs> yeah, so I, at least the dying sequences were entertaining enough that when you got frustrated from dying, at least you could sort of smile at watching Dirk get strangulated or suffocated or chomped by a snake or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> yes. I think... What made it worse, and I don't know if this is like a glitch, because like I, I like I said, I have no idea about the game, but I feel like I would do a room, and then I would do it again mirrored. No, um, that's actually something that was um, crap. What's the word? A feature. That lack of a better word. That was a feature of this game. So I didn't know this. Uh, Saucy Slingo was in the mixer stream, and we were talking a little bit about this. Okay. Um, this game came out in 1983, Dragon's Lair. So, and at the time, this was a groundbreaking game. Um, little bit of comparison, the other game that came out, the other big game that came out that year is Super Mario Bros. So, there wasn't a whole lot of variety out there. And that was one of the things that this game would do to kind of mix up, mix up the gameplay is you would do a room and you know, you have to go left, right, a B up one time. And then the next time you have to do it reverse of whatever it is. I just said, okay, I guess that makes sense for cool eighties technology. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I kind of glad I grew up when I did. I had yeah, good, right. I had, Absolutely. I had good <laughs> games. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's, Okay, that makes sense, I guess. I didn't know that. But from a, I just want my thousand points and I hate this game kind of thing, that was frustrating. <laughs> um, I, I don't, anything else for game? Like, it's, I can't believe we just talked for six minutes on up, down, left, right, A. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's all it really is. You're a, a valiant knight, you're going in to save the princess. Dragon's Lair 1, Dragon's Lair 2, and then Dragon's Lair 3. Three, which is technically called Space Ages, you're now in the future and in space, but it's the exact same game. Yep, and that messed with me actually, because again, I know nothing. I'm like Jon Snow. It's called Dragon's <laughs> Lair Trilogy, and you got Dragon's Lair One, Dragon's Lair Two, and then where the hell's Dragon's Lair Three? What is Space Ace? Right. Um, but yeah, like you said, it's literally the exact same game in space instead of in Dragon Dungeon. But it, it, I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something, but it doesn't make sense that it's Dragon's Lair Trilogy. It's your, like, Dragon's Lair Pair plus Space Ace. <laughs> and then you get the that, double rhyme in there. That would definitely, you know, help, you know, I don't, I don't even know. I'm trying to, you know, guide you of what you're actually trying to get here. Yeah. They're made by the same dude. I don't remember his name, but it does say Dragon's Lair by blah, blah, blah. Dragon's Lair 2, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, Blah, blah, blah presents uh, Space Ace. Doof. Yeah, I forgot. I was thinking Don something, but that it could be hilariously off. Someone's going to comment on us. You two idiots. Yeah, who is right, this? Who? Damn whippersnappers don't remember who. <laughs> I, can, I can see L making fun of us right now. Already. You mean Sid? <laughs> yes, yes, Sid. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's jump into the reason I feel like 
I don't want to be mean, but I feel like the reason most people are playing this game, at least in our podcast crew, is for the achievements. Fair assessment? I find that fair, considering our, our audience. All right. Um, I believe there are 12 achievements. I probably should have done some research, but I believe there are 12 achievements. Yes, you sir. get th- three of them in the first game. I think four in the second game, and then four in Space Ace, and then one for just beating all of them. Um, some of them are story-related, but they're only like 25 or 50 pointers. And then some are like beat the game on max difficulty, which I don't, I didn't play the regular difficulty. I guess your button clicks, you have less time to input. You would think that. That makes sense, doesn't it? Uh oh. So, (laughs) uh, what was the first game I did this? Uh, Space Ace. So I played this on the easier difficulty and then. Throughout the stream, I was act- I was actually kind of done playing this. I was I just didn't want to play the game anymore, and I was persuaded by those in chat to to continue and get the completion. So I start like I said, I start with the easy difficulty, and then I put on Ace mode. The only difference to it, you would think you have less time. You have the exact same amount of time, but it adds extra uh, scenes to it. Okay, so it's harder. In that instead of, I don't know, four or five scenes, you now have six or seven. It's not like it at doubles the length any. It just adds two or three more. Okay. So then if you mess up, there's more penalty because you have to go back through more, too. Right. Okay. I think the worst achievement in the game, in my opinion, was the one for watching Space Ace. <laughs> just because, like, I don't even really want to be playing this game. Why would I want to watch it and not actually do anything? Yeah, that's so, kind of enough an achievement. You, I mean, you really didn't need that. And the feature is there in all three games, so I'm glad that they only made you do it once at least. That definitely is a little bit nicer. That's, I see where they're coming from from the dev standpoint, though. It is a feature, so let's acknowledge this feature. Are non-achievement hunters who are literally only playing this game to play it, are they going to go and watch it for it was a 25 or 50 points? I don't know if they would, but... I guess that was, like you said, groundbreaking on the 1983 release to have the movie and the game on one disc. So, I mean, I guess. Oh, and fun fact about being a disc: this was actually a laser disc game. Yep. If you Something kids don't know those, they're like the giant frisbee, ginormous things. If you thought a vinyl couldn't get was was too big and it couldn't get any bigger, there you go. You they wrong. made laser disc. But I mean, I guess. I guess one thing that is nice about the movie mode, to be fair, I was very much like you. I was just focusing down on the bottom of the screen, had no idea what was going on. And when I had to watch it, you know, it's just like, oh, there's actually somewhat of a fever dream of a story going on. Okay. Yeah, that's fair, actually. Like you said, I was, as I assume all gamers are, focused on the button inputs and not actually watching the story. So it's sort of hard to evaluate the story for any real depth. Because you're not really paying attention. So that is a fair point that you bring up. Yeah. And that actually, that leads me into one of the hardest achievements for me. And that was to collect the butterfly treasure. I'm glad you said that. That's where I was going next. <laughs> See, I like I said, I went in blind. I didn't look at any of the achievements. I wanted to ex- experience this game for what it is. And I completed Dragon Slayer 1. Went through, completed Dragon Slayer 2, needed, I re- realized I needed all the treasure, said, screw that, let me go on the Space <laughs> Ace, and then came back to it. And while I was playing through the game, looking for all the treasures, I got to the point, I found all of the treasures except the stupid butterfly. And uh, after playing this game for right around two and a half hours or so, wasn't happy of a camper oh my god i did my best to go in blind but i did look at the achievements beforehand and i saw there were the difficulty ones for the games um so i clicked on one of the guides on ta and just one of the comments said just fyi to beat it on this difficulty you need all 11 collectibles so that was my tip off like all right let me look up a collectible guide and this was still before I knew gameplay, so I'm thinking there's going to be maps and where to find them. <laughs> Not just hit a different button that is displayed on screen. Yeah, which um, is crazy, because it's like the game is telling you, do this, and you have to do something completely opposite. And that did actually mess with my head, because you're so, like, programmed, yeah. you're wired as a gamer. When you see up, you immediately hit up. 
But no, you have and to even, hit right, down. You're, you're deliberately trying not to, and it tells you, hit right. And you're like, no, I need to hit left. But instinctively, you hit right. You're like, ah, now I got to start over. So you voluntarily die, and then you do it again. Yep. Ah, oh, the joy of uh, achievement hunting. <laughs> so let's get to, I for me anyway, the big elephant in the room. This game sells digital only for nineteen ninety nine US, and I assume the equivalent. Um, actually, I know for a fact the equivalent in other regions because I tried to do my my uh, you know Turkey and Brazil and Argentina shenanigans, and it's about twenty dollars in every region. So. I feel like uh, listeners already know where we're going with this, but what do you think? Is this a $20 game? Should it be a $20 game? No. I could not see myself spending $20 on this game. I got, I believe, three hours worth of gameplay out of this, and it's a relatively easy thousand. I mean, of persistence, you get the thousand. It's not that bad. But nah, I think twenty dollars is just a bit much. But at the same time, with me saying that, I can see someone, um, like a Nate or an L or an older gamer going, "Oh man, I love Dragon's Trilogy back in or Dragon's Lair back in the day. I'll spend twenty bucks." So does nostalgia help that? Question mark. And yeah, we're in the same boat, so I can't add on to that question, but I would agree with your assessment. I think I'm a little harsher than you. You said $20 is a bit much. I feel like $20 is way too much. Uh, <laughs> if this, if it sold for $10, I feel like that would be fair for what it is. I agree. But even at $10, um, I, I did do some research. You can get these on your phone. Like you can play them in a browser. It's like really? a 99 cent app on the, yeah, it's, so are you paying $20 for the display on a TV for achievement privilege? I can't imagine it was that difficult to port to console, seeing as they've already done it on Windows and 360, so... Yeah, I, $20... I don't know. I, I'm sure there's achievement hunters out there go, 20 bucks for a 1,000 gamer score? Yeah, sure, Heck I'll yeah, do that. Yeah, of course. Me, I, I don't know. If you were to tell me it's 10 bucks, I can get a 1,000 gamer score for about three hours worth of work. Okay. I don't find that unreasonable, but $10 is the absolute most I could see myself spending on this. Yeah, I 20, 20 is very bad. 10, I'd say go for it for 10 if you're an achievement hunter yeah. um, or if you just like the games. I got a discount code from some reputable sources for $12, and I don't know, I've done worse for $12 and achievements, <laughs> and 10 would have been, I think 10 would have been the sweet spot. But I don't. I don't mind having paid twelve. Definitely not twenty, though. That's the verdict here. It's definitely not twenty. I agree, and I can very much see this going on sale here real soon. Oh yeah, I can't imagine there's a huge audience out there like yes, Dragon's Lair trilogy, twenty bucks, yeah, yeah. I lot. feel like this is. Oh, I didn't know that game existed. Oh, it's on sale. I'll check it out. Oh yeah. When if when this thing gets cut fifty percent on a sale. And Achievement Hunter see, you know, oh, it's a one to two hour completion, the people will hop on it. Absolutely. I feel like the ratio will actually go up a little bit, too, when it does go on sale. Just because anybody that bought it at 20 went in with the completion mindset versus at $10, there might be just some people looking to explore just to see what it's all about and don't necessarily care about the completion. Yeah. And plenty of people going, oh, I played these games in my childhood. Let me try this again. Which, as of right now, the game, obviously, as of recording, the game has a 1.6 ratio, which isn't bad. For what it is, I'm actually, yeah, I'm surprised it's that high. There are a couple tricky ones, like Butterfly in particular, all the other collectibles. But, I mean, for the most part, it's play the game, get achievements. Yeah, I mean, skill-wise, there's really not a high skill cap to it. It's just persistence. Yeah, there are definitely a couple tricky spots, but I mean, 85, maybe 90% of the game is very easy button prompts. Oh, yeah. As, as soon as you learn what to do, you kind of you kind of just go through the motions and get it. And that's what really messed me up a lot is where I'm like, okay, this room's coming up. I do this, but then all of a sudden it flips on me and I'm hitting the wrong buttons just thinking yep. I know what yep. to do. And I feel like... Actually, as I'm about to say this, I don't know if that's true. I was going to say, I feel like the first game is the toughest, but I don't know if that's just because I didn't have the learning curve quite under my belt yet. Um, 
I will say, I think Space Ace is the easiest. I felt that the easiest. I felt like the time you have to hit the button in Space Ace was the longest. And yeah, I, now that I'm thinking about it, I think the first one was the most difficult because you had just hair, split seconds to click the button. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if this is like a weird flex, but I'm not going for like braggart or anything. <laughs> the first one I died many, many times, had many, many continues. And there's no penalty for dying and continuing, by the way, other than having to redo the section that you died on. Yeah, um, absolutely. And then the second one I died maybe half as many. I only continued probably two or three times. And I went through Space Ace with one continue. I think I died eight times in the whole game. So, Yeah, I, I definitely died way more than you. But <laughs> I'm along that lines where you just die less. And it probably is because it's the same game. You just kind of get the hang of it. Yeah, I think that's probably a fair takeaway. I mean, like, the first achievement that I unlocked was the Bumbling Knight, and that's to never make a correct move in a new <laughs> game. And I probably got that within three minutes, if that. Probably, honestly, even a first minute, where it's like I was I was in the game, and I'm just sailing through the river, whatever it is, and I'm just dying. I'm just like, what? And then I die again. So it's like, what, did, what, <laughs> what do I to do? It just actually, drops you in the game. I actually couldn't get that one. That was the last one I got in the first game. Oh, now that's a weird flex. Right? Apparently you can only get it in easy mode. And, you know, really? I'm so cool. I was only playing in hard mode. Yeah, I was deliberately just dying, dying, dying. Couldn't get it. So finally I got all the others, popped in an easy mode, and then I died in the first room three times. And that was that. That's odd. Yeah. That's weird that you can only get that in easy mode, which that actually reminds me of another achievement. The last one I unlocked choked out. That you can only get that one in hard mode. You can Yes, you can only get it in hard mode. And th if you read the guide, it tells you to purposely kill yourself. In it's the very first room. You put on hard mode. It's the very first room. Purposely kill yourself. It tells you hit up. But if you don't hit up, you just go through the scene and you don't actually die. So you have to hit left or right in order to die. Well, me thinking, oh, this is no big deal. I'll just die. I'll just sit here. You know, I missed the achievement because... I don't know. It's 1230. I'm tired and just not thinking, I guess. I'm blaming that anyway. <laughs> but if you continue through the game, that scene never actually pops up again. Yep. So if you do this and you just let yourself continue, just back out, reload the game because you're not going to find that scene again. Yep. Yeah, I actually had to do the same thing. I was waiting, waiting, waiting. I got the, the one in the potion room popped up and I managed to get that one. I was like, where is this bedroom? Where is the bedroom? Which yeah. isn't as exciting as it sounds, but, uh, <laughs> anything else to say before, uh, I, I mean, the only other thing I can think of is this is listed on TA as an adventure collection game, which I guess collection because of Dragon's mm. Lair 2, I guess that technically falls, but adventure seems <sighs> odd. Like, I mean, I guess it's an adventure because, you know, you're a knight that goes through and saves the princess, but is it really an adventure game or QTE simulator? 1983. Yeah, and that brings up a, a fair point. There certainly is an adventure to be had. I feel like by its loosest definition, guy saves princess, that's an adventure through the castle or through space. But as far as gameplay goes, are you going on an adventure? I don't know. I mean, I guess it's just the genre they have to put it in. Yeah, this might just be one of those weird ones where it doesn't quite fit anything we have, so we'll put it in the, you know, the runner-up and just leave it there. I feel like I you could, could make a case for action, just because, like, like no. <laughs> and I by no means I'm comparing this to a genuine action game, but, like, yeah. Devil May Cry, you gotta button mash and hit buttons or you die. And, like, here you, you gotta hit your five buttons or you die. I don't know. Is that action? I could see this being a little bit more of an action adventure, but <laughs> I don't really know. And like, you could, like, someone, I don't agree with it, but I feel like someone could make the point and click argument because you're pointing ooh. and clicking your buttons and you got to do, like, the collectibles. You yeah, I think this could be a point and click game, honestly. There. I almost want to go see what the uh, Windows 8 and 360 stacks are. Not stacks, but, you know, just the first one. See what they're classified as. Dragon Slayer Win 8 <laughs> is listed as an adventure game as well, so. Alright, so at least they're consistent then. I feel like nothing's going to be done about it just because where 
where would you put it? You don't really have a compelling argument for anything. Um, I mean, what the heck? Let's just go visual novel because you got sprites of the characters on screen, and if you make really the wrong choice, you die. Game. Bad, bad ending. <laughs> I, was like, I guess the best way to end it is out of five layers that didn't contain dragons. What would you give this? <laughs> uh, well, I was going to say out of how many dragon eggs. Um, and this is so hard to rate. As an achievement hunter who spent $12 on this game and got a thousand points, I will give it a 2.5 dragon eggs out of five. Just because I got my easy points and I went on my way. If I'm as a game, as a regular gamer, I guess a, a one egg out of five, just yeah, because it works, it functions, there is stuff to do, and lots of features, games. and three games in one. I, it, it really is it's tough, tough to rate, rate and I feel you tough on to that, rate. like the achievement hunter side, I feel like, you know, this is three, three and a half-ish, because it is relatively easy. But trying to put an actual rating to it is difficult because if you ask me, it's a 0.5. I didn't really enjoy this, like, and it's only a 0.5 because I can't go lower. <laughs> but at the same time, this is something that was in 1983, and how do I retroactively rate something that I have no nostalgia for, I didn't grow up on? I mean, this was eight years before I was born. Whippersnapper. This was only seven years before I was born. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I, I guess overall I'd have to say like a two and a half, three star, all things considering. But this this was definitely by no means my favorite game in the world. No, I have I played worse for points. Absolutely, have oh, I? Yes. <laughs> have I spent my money much more wisely? Also, absolutely. So it's a game, kind of. Anyway, it's kind of a game, and it's. Generally, relatively easy points in under three hours if you go in completely blind like you did. Yeah. So, it it's a game. It's a certain number of dragon eggs out of five dragon eggs. You tell us. <laughs> the jury's out for us. It's difficult to rate for us. <laughs> yeah. I feel like people who have played this like with nostalgia glasses on, if you grew up on these games... Like, flashback, let us, like, what are we missing? Obviously, playing it for the first time in 2019, we're unimpressed. Yeah. But, like, if this was a big deal for you, I, I feel like it, it could be much better. Yeah, and that was that's the other thing, that when you think about this, this, this was an arcade machine. So, imagine putting a quarter in, or maybe being 1983, a nickel in every <laughs> single time, and going, oh, I need to go a little bit more nickel. Oh, I lost all my lives. Nickel. Like, I would have been out a couple of dollars. Actually, a lot of dollars. If oh, yeah, playing easily. This. I kind of wish there was like an in-game tracker, see how many times he actually died. Especially in the first oh. game. I feel like I would have been burning through the, the nickels. Did they even have coins in 1983? Are we, like, is this like wooden pegs? I mean, it might have been. Who knows? I mean, <laughs> was there paper? I assume there was paper. I don't know. There was definitely paper if they had arcade cabinets. Ooh, or were they just true. like chiseling this on on stone? You know, this, this might have. Who knows? That, that's such a long time ago. Oh my god, this game was programmed by cavemen, so I actually have to give it five out of five then, because that's just <laughs> impressive. You don't have fire, but we have dragons lair. Hey, fog, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for listening to us ramble about a game that we. Probably have no business rambling about, but... <laughs> Probably don't. Who let us do this? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you for listening. Uh, Foof, it was nice to finally get some airtime together. For real. I can't believe it's taken so long. I can't believe this is the first time that we've actually spoken and done something together. Uh, you know, early bird gets the worm and all that stuff, so... Ah, eh, teachers. <laughs> hey, I got uh, two more days of class, baby. And Woo! then four days of finals and two days of oh, oh. my favorite in service. So I don't, what does that add up to? I'm too tired for math. Two, two four, two, eight? eight days, eight days of school. And then you can stay up till a whole 10 o'clock. Woohoo. 10 o'clock. Kelsey still has school. So I still uh. have to be quiet after nine o'clock. <laughs> okay. So you're almost home free. There we go. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. And we will see you around later. 
Hey everybody, and welcome to yet another new segment. This one is called Milestone Musings. So this one is dedicated to, well, basically the community. If you have some uh, elaborate or significant milestone coming up, uh, we'd like to talk to you about it and just kind of find out more about it rather than just a little quick blip on proclamation points. Uh, we'd rather kind of find out uh, the story behind it. So today, my guinea pig, is uh, someone that you all know. He goes by X the Hero. Welcome, buddy. Hey, long time no see. Yeah, yeah. We I, it seems like we used to do a segment together at one point. Yeah, what was was it very, <laughs> very occasional yeah, something very, or another? Very occasionally recorded segment. There we go. Viewers. viewers. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it was called. So uh, you're joining me today because you are. Uh, well, tell us about your uh, latest milestone. How about that? All right. You're just going to throw me to the wolves. Well, yeah. at about 3 o'clock this morning, Yankee time, I <laughs> hit 800,000 gamer score. Woo! Woo! That's exciting. Well, let me just be, I don't know, I don't know what number I am. Maybe I'm first, maybe I'm 25th. I don't know. But let me be one of those numbers to congratulate you on this milestone. So... Uh, I'm sure that you know what place you are on the overall gamer score leaderboard, right? Um, I am I top 200 yet? I don't follow that super closely. <laughs> well, see, I do. And so you <laughs> are, in fact, yes, you are in the top 200, handedly, rather. Uh, you are number 178. Very nice. You're, you're sitting there with that nice, even number of 800,000. So let's, uh, let's talk about the final push there. So I've been kind of watching you approach this for a while uh mainly because you have eighteen thousand five hundred this month and i've been watching you because you're on my leaderboard on this uh, xbox app i have on my phone and i don't like it when people get ahead of me and you're about <laughs> four thousand ahead of me and so i've been like well what's going on so then i noticed you were really pushing it. and you were really uh kind of coming on strong on this uh you were you weren't dilly-dallying by any stretch so i certainly was not dilly-dallying or lollygagging <laughs> there was none of that so Talk to us about the final push there, because, man, you put up a lot of gamer score in that last uh, week or so. Um, well, those of you who know me know that I'm getting married um, in less than a month, actually, which is, whoa! Um, mm -hmm. So this weekend is Kelsley's Bachelorette weekend, so I pretty much decided, hey, I got the place to myself for, you know, three days, so I'm going to eat all the carbs and I'm going to play all the crappy games. <laughs> well, you definitely did that. So the final push, uh, it looks like you um, were hanging out with your friends, the gnomes. Uh, <laughs> uh, it looks like a, a lot of gnomes. Uh, a whole lot uh, of gnomes. <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, he's doing number one. Oh, wait, he's on number two. Oh, wait, wait. No, he's playing gnomes three now. <laughs> so uh, so you decide on what for your final 800,000 Chivo uh, gain there? So it's it's kind of like twofold. I like nice even numbers because I have notoriously bad luck with the Xbox tracker, um, not updating my score correctly. So if I can end on like a zero zero or a fifty or something, and then just find a bunch of even hundred or fifty point achievements, then you know it makes me feel better going into the milestone and the Nobs Garden games. And what was the other one I played? Lost Artifact Soulstone, which is the same game, basically. <laughs> yeah, they're all the same. They all have nice, even 50, 75, and 100-point achievements. So I think I got myself to, like, 797, 300. I'm like, let's do it. Just even numbers all the way out. Um, the second half of that is that I like to have my, my milestone achievement be something significant. So mm. 600,000, I used Expert Gamer. Um, 700,000, since I'm actually really bad at video games, I used, what are the buttons? And then for 800,000, I used Sprinter, because at this point, I'm sprinting to 1 million. Ah, uh, yes, I, I saw that on your, uh, your TA update. Yep. And, uh, you're, you're declaring it, you're calling your shot there. I am. So... It's no longer a marathon. The marathon is over. <laughs> I'm in the final sprint now, so Sprinter seemed very fitting. All right, so you're sprinting to a million. So what's the, what's the plan there? What's the, what's the ETA, I guess, in order to get to your one million? Um, I'd like to have it within a year. So next summer, summer 2020. Mm -hmm. Calling it now. I will have it by summer 2020. Yeah, that's a, that's a good uh, guesstimate. I mean, it's about, I don't know, 200,000 is about as good as you can hope for in a year without just being absolutely insane. So 
Um, I know there's other people that are absolutely insane. They would scoff at our mere 200,000 in one year's time, but that's neither here or there. I figure if Red can do 200,000 in 29 days, I can do it in 365. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say that's a, a safe bet. So I was looking at your numbers here. It says you got that 600,000th, like you said, uh, on July 16th, and then um, uh, you got your 700,000th on November 21st. So... Uh, and then you got 800 on May 25th. You, was, uh, you can yesterday, so you can kind of see. Yeah, that's 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 about right. I mean, and you can see that G task influence too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Pushing that, you know, the one set a hundred thousand in four months, and the next set in eight. Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, I'm I'm a little concerned here because, as you mentioned, you have a new bride to be. And so, uh, are you going to be able to maintain this pace uh, with your marital status officially changed? Uh, to be honest, we've actually talked about this. Nothing, nothing's really going to change other than the fact that, you know, we'll be married and Kelsey's last name. Um, but I mean, we've lived together for four years, mm -hmm. so we, we kind of know each other's routines. We're not planning on moving anytime soon. So yes, to answer your question, I, I will be okay. just fine. Yeah. Nothing will change. Wink, wink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Take it from a married person. Nothing changes. Nothing, nothing. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> well, you know, if you ask <laughs> Kelsey's grandma, as soon as we're married, everything changes because I'm just going to make all the decisions for her. And her grandma's really worried that we're just going to pack up and move to Arizona once we're married. Ooh, are you? No. <laughs> oh, okay. There's right. not even anything in Arizona unless you like sand. No, there's no, is there state tax down there? I can't. I don't think there is. I don't, I don't know. know. If only we had someone, some listener on the show that lives down there. <laughs> So, anyhow, so I have a little something something for you, uh, just kind of a mini game, just to kind of reflect back. Uh, oh, oh boy. So, well, first of all, let's just say, was there any memorable moments from the 700,000 to 800,000 that you would like to share? Any highlights, if you will? Yes, actually. Um, both fairly recent uh, and mm -hmm. both also JRPGs, and both also JRPGs that were featured in the latest game swap, which is, whoa. Um, that, that was amazing, that that. Mm -hmm. yeah how about that's that a that's a great that's a segment, great segment. We, <laughs> people should listen to that one. we should we should Woo. we should do that again soon hey if only we had a bunch of time coming up yeah right <laughs> jerk <laughs> i still got like two weeks um anyway kingdom hearts 3 and final fantasy 7 um i love me some jrpgs um you know i played the first kingdom hearts when did that come out 2001 two so i was you know a wee whippersnapper and now i finally got to play the new one with achievements and then same, Final Fantasy VII, I played through that three or four times. It was nice to play through it again with achievements. And also with that 3x speed boost. That was that was a game changer. Mm -hmm. I've never played a single one of them. Yeah, of course. They take longer than six <laughs> hours to complete. <laughs> Even back when they first came out. Never played one. Never ever. So... Um, so those are games you would recommend. How about the other end of the spectrum? What, uh, any games that you would not recommend? Um... Nope, I am proud of every game on my tag. Oh, wow. Awesome. Well, that was easy. So <laughs> I will say, um, <laughs> 750 to 800,000, a big chunk of that was my leftover G-Task fodder that I never got to dump in that final week. Oh, yes. Um, Did that happen in the 700 to 800 range? That was, Where yeah, you... mostly 750 to 800. Most of the games I've played have been G-Task. But did that fateful day occur after 700, or was that in the late 600s? Oh, no, that fateful day. I think that was 725, I'm, so, I'm sorry to bring that up. Uh, that was. I'm surprised that wasn't you know mentioned as a highlight. <laughs> no, or something. <laughs> <or low lighters. laughs> yeah, Whew, that was a bad one. So, um, anyhow, I got a quick little game before I let you go here. So, I call this uh, Know Thy Chivos. All right, so... <laughs> so you know i'm sure that you you're proud of all of these games on your tags and everything so i was just kind of perusing them and i just handpicked a couple just to see how well you were paying attention so i'm gonna give you the name of the achievement oh my god and if you don't know i'll i'll even give you the description if you can't get it from just the name of it and then what i want you to do is to guess the game so for example here's one that would just an example so if i said pancake that was one that you got in this range so you would think, hmm, Pancake, I remember that one. And then you would tell me it's obviously from which game? Uh, Donut County? Ah, Bird Cakes, absolutely correct. So <laughs> yeah, 
But had you not guessed that immediately, I would have said, well, the description is beat a wave with a pink cupcake. And you probably would have gotten that one. All right, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I'd have gotten that one. Okay, so here we go. I got. I just got five of them. I, I <laughs> just just kind of see how this goes here. So your first one is Socks Juggler. Yeah, give me the description. <laughs> All right, for Socks Juggler, you made Manson the Cat happy with Dennis's socks. It's got to be. Okay. It's an, on, this, it's an ID game. Oh man, this is. I like this one. This is like one of my favorite ones. This is. Is it Donut know, County this. again? <laughs> no, no, it's not always going to be Donut. That's not always going to be. I'm just going to guess that for all of them. <laughs> um, I have no idea. Oh, what man. kind of game is it? Uh, it's a point and click. Point and click socks juggler. Oh wow! Deponia. No, I have, I have no idea. Mecha Nicka High, Mecha Honey Ho. Oh, that was a great game. Yeah, and that's where you get the socks and you go give them to the cat, and the cat just sits there and plays with them, and you made them happy. It was a, it was a cool achievement. The the cat was so happy. Hmm. Okay, so your <laughs> next one is uh, this one caught my eye. I don't know why. I was just, just random ones. Blowjob. That is actually Deponia, so that's funny <laughs> yeah. that I guessed that one. <laughs> yeah, I had no idea there was an achievement called that, and I just thought it was worth it. I distinctly right. remember that one because I cracked up when I unlocked it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I was looking through your list, I was like, what in the world is this? And uh, then the description is, actually that would have been Tony's job. Yeah. Secret. Yeah, that was uh, interesting. Okay, <laughs> I've never played that game, uh, I, I have no idea what's going on, I just know that there's a achievement called that. So Just for the, the record, there's no script or anything here, so... The fact that I mentioned Deponia as a guest for the first one was totally <laughs> coincidental. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. Well, all right, here's the next one. Reach for the sky. No idea. No idea. Okay, this is for plucking the moon right out of the sky. I have no idea on this one. <laughs> what kind of game? Uh, ironically, I think it's another point-and-click puzzle. I Point-and-click puzzle, I guess. I do play uh, a lot of point-and-clicks. I believe I'm like... Number 19 or something in the country. Oh, wow. um, damn, I have no idea. <laughs> it is a heartwarming story about uh, two children. And... Oh, is this the Gardens Between? There you go. Okay. Yeah, yep. yeah, and, yeah and then, then the chick moves off. Spoiler alert. Okay, <laughs> next one. I, I picked this one just for you. Music lover. Music lover. Because you're a music guy. I, I mean, don't forget to plug your stuff at the end. Huh. All right, description? Oh, man. Music lover. I'm surprised you didn't get that one off the top. But your description is finish Gecko Park without collecting the radio. Oh, Donut County. <laughs> of course. What the heck? Game of the year, man. Come on. You always said you're always going to guess Donut County. And then what? you stop guessing Donut <laughs> County the one time. It's the right answer. What in the world? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're consistent here. All right, and your last one. I threw this one in just because we had just recently talked about EDM music and one of my favorite bands of all time, Daft Punk. And so the achievement is One More Time. I feel like I have probably 50 achievements called One More Time. <laughs> yeah, I just threw it in because we had just recently talked about uh, EDM music. And Shot in the Dark, since you're talking about music, is it Wailing Heights? No, that's it's not actually. It has nothing to do with music. Actually. Oh, it's another puzzle game. Yeah. All right, another a poor one. Yeah. What's my description? Complete a previously passed level. Uh, not much there. Not much there, man. <laughs> I feel like every puzzle game. Has not much. That. Yeah, I was gonna say no. Not much cut. I just threw it in for the previously the passed game. level music lover. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm 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 blanking out. Well, are you are you good at databasing, like on, in Microsoft? Yes. So if I didn't let you database in Microsoft Office, you would say that you are possibly the name of this game. What? <laughs> Offline? <laughs> Access denied, of course. Oh, Access highlight of, of my year. Access denied. <laughs> yeah. Woo, okay. Well, that was quite a trip down memory lane there. I think you got... What was I, two what? for five? 
I, th- I think you were five for five. I, I wasn't keeping count, but uh, <laughs> I like the way yeah, you say. I mean, is that how you do students' grades too? <laughs> yeah, you did really good. Yeah. And, well, I figured it's too much paperwork to film, so you know, seventy uh, is the new fifty. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> so, anyhow, um, I think that's about all the time we got. I don't want to bore people to death with the uh, you know milestone talks, but uh, again, congratulations. Uh, that's really awesome. Uh, I had one more question. Uh, we wanted to know. Where are you and Kelsey registered so your Chivo hunting friends can buy you stuff that you'll never use? Ha <laughs> um, Is this a serious question? <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll go check it out. What we got? All right. What the heck? It's uh, thenot.com slash goodenoughfosterwedding, and then you can see our registry. We are on Amazon and Target, I believe. All right, people. Yeah. You, you, you love X the Hero now. Let's go support him now. And, and speaking of support... Um, you do some music yeah uh yeah i feel like i say after every song that the next one's coming (laughs) soon and then you know life and responsibility and dishes and taxes uh and a hundred and a hundred thousand gamer scores yeah but new song coming soon and if you'll notice i have not touched my xbox since dinging 800 because i have been hard at work literally all day since i woke up at like 9 30 this morning so Hmm. So that's that was your music plug. I don't think I heard anything about the, the actual music other than you make it. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I don't think you told I us have like nineteen fighting. subscribers, and I think <laughs> well, all nineteen are probably 20. in the podcast. That's cool. But window of opportunity on YouTube and Facebook. Check me out. Awesome. Well, cool, man. Well, thanks for joining me today. Uh, uh, good luck, uh, you know, getting off that hump. You know, the eight hundred thousand plateau. I mean. There's uh, there's only about three or four more of those eight floor games that are the exact same yeah, right. gnome gardens that you could play. <laughs> uh, one in prehistoric times, one in you know uh, what is it uh, medieval times, and I don't know. There's some other ones, but anyhow, uh, I guess that's all the time we got for you. So if you have a milestone that uh, you would like to talk about, uh, just let us know and we'll get you on and uh, talk about it. How about that? So thanks for joining us and that is. That's it. All right. Cool. Thanks. Maybe we'll uh, we'll record again someday soon. Yeah. Vores is coming up at some point. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Later. <laughs> Later, guys. See ya. <laughs>